Happy Monday. The rock block continues. It continues. Hello. Yeah. Hold hey. on. Oh. Chat yeah. face. Yeah. Hey, Andrew. Yeah. Microphone. <laughs> there he is. Just did you see my last text message to you? Uh, which one? I mean, I know you never checked them, but I'm asking on this one, so I know you didn't see it. But <laughs> well, I'm I'm sorry, Andrew. I didn't mean to keep it from you, but uh, uh, you know, uh, you you mentioning that that was a uh, it was unfortunate that you were happening to get into it as a hobby uh, at the point where that deal was closing. So, Bryce, I had this dream that like sort of we like are normal, live, by the way. I had this dream last night. It was like one of those very realist, everything's mundane. I'm sitting at a table somewhere at a mall or something like that. Justin says, hey, how you doing? And he hands me, he hands me a pop-up book that he designed, right? Okay. Like he made a pop-up book and said, yeah, I kept it kind of a secret, a thing I've been working on. He goes, uh, and I just signed a four, four book deal, four pop-up book deal for a million dollars. Wow. Okay. That's not and bad. And I'm like, that's great. Like, I literally, in the dream, had to go into the bathroom and go, man, wh why didn't he tell me? You know, why didn't he tell me? It was, it was, it was, uh, it was very realistic. I'm like, that's great, dude. That's great. I'm like, huh, I feel it's just that he didn't tell me the thing that bothers me is that that's it, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Was, did, did he have his pop-up book? Was it like the big fancy ones that you've been getting into lately? It was it was it was good. Not really that inspired. It was colorful. It was well produced, but it wasn't like I'm looking at this going like he could have done a lot more with it if he you know called his buddy. That's but he wanted to be best. his thing, that's his show. So that's the best part of it is that the book wasn't even that good. It wasn't bad. It was just sort of like a you know it just made me go like man like you know yeah. Anyway, right, I'm very happy for here? you. Very great. Good luck with your pop up book. Can you confirm now, Justin, if you are or are not getting a pop-up book publishing deal? I am, I am indeed not involved in any negotiations, nor have I ever been in, in pop-up book publication. No. Wink. Mm-hmm. Where's Brian? Which is exactly what somebody who was working on a million-dollar deal would say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? No, hey, listen. Everybody's not running for president until they're called to run. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. So weird. It feels like we just did this two days ago. Yeah. Oh my god, I know. I was just thinking about that, or it's like, man, we're just gonna wrap it right back around and and uh, do that in Night Attack tonight. Yeah, Night Attack would be good. We got we got a lot of really good questions for uh, for tonight. Yeah, I, I feel like this is gonna be solid. I'm, I'm fine with this just being kind of a hang loose sort of episode with with Night Attack. Oh, heads up. Um, on this show, I'm, I'm probably going to have to dip out on after things fairly early because this was the only time I could get physical therapy. Okay, yeah. That's, that's fine for me. What Before, a diva. Before Dragon Con. Uh, yeah, so we're doing Night Attack tonight. Uh, if you didn't get, if, you, if people aren't able to see it tonight, uh, I'm probably just going to rebroadcast it tomorrow at normal time. We're sure. pre-show and stuff. Um, cause Brian, Brian's doing his, 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 uh, uh, wizard Academy class tomorrow and Wednesday. So, uh, it's going to be pretty swamped to do it tomorrow night. Hey, there he is. Yo, 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 where, 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 what am I failing at this time? No, no, no. We were just explaining the scheduling. Situation. Oh, life. Got it. Hmm. Life. Hmm. <laughs> Get all the Ghibli's out. Studio get Ghibli? All your, get all your, yeah, get all your Studio Ghibli's out. Mm. All that painstakingly drawn ramen and delicious <sighs> food. and Don't make me want ramen. Ramen's so good. I want to hear ramen. I, I get, uh, uh, you know when you like want, want a certain type of food sometimes and you're like, okay, well then I'm going to, I could go, I could go and get get it but i'll make make it myself right like like uh, like if, if, if you're ever like oh you know i could i could go for some steak but so you just go home and make steak and you don't go out to it like a steakhouse or something right 
So I, I get that with ramen, but I don't have I, I don't have any of the good stuff for ramen. Like boiling water. Oh well, no, ramen. But, but like good stock and like good meats and and any vegetables at all. So I don't know. I always think I want like Michi ramen or something, like a good ramen place, and then I go and make like instant ramen. I'm like, oh this is not really sating my appetite. Yeah. Ugh. That's my weird food story. You got this, Brian. Ooh, spooky weird food. By the way, so, uh, I, 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 I like the Taylor Swift video. I was not expecting to like the Taylor Swift video. I like the Taylor no, Swift No, no, no. Uh, didn't didn't you get it. the memo? It's bad, and you're supposed to hate it. Everyone's <laughs> supposed to hate it. Uh, that's that's what everyone tells me, so we're all supposed to hate it. It's bad. Wait, the basketball one? No, that's Katy Perry. Uh-oh. Oh, Katy Perry. It's Sorry. Katie. Oh, and the Taylor, I haven't seen the Taylor Swift one. I mm. like Taylor Swift. Not anymore. Uh, you're Perry. supposed to. Uh, not anymore. Stop liking her. Stop liking her. That's the memo. The Perry video. The song was pretty mediocre for the cast they put nope, together. No, they, 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 they look. Stop liking. Stop liking her. The Nicki Minaj rap that the Katy Perry song had was pretty good. But, like, yeah, but but she does the thing. At, at least in that video, they tried to hide it a little bit more. That Nicki Minaj does not show up to music video shoots. Right. Just like listen. Uh, I'm just going to give you green screen stuff that I'm recording in my uh, living room, and you can do whatever you want with it, but I'm not coming to your video shoot. Yeah. All right. You guys, uh, you guys feel good to do... Uh... Yes, I am very puzzled why Justin's beard is suddenly longer than mine. It doesn't seem like beards should grow at different rates. I agree, Bryce. It seems like all beards should grow at the same pace. And I'm glad you brought it up. Okay, yeah. You're, you're welcome. It's, can we get a... Uh, I mean, no, I'm not offended that you brought it up, and I'm not afraid of offended by the implication that I'm less of a man for the fact that it's taken me two months to get to what Justin does in three days. I'm glad you brought it up, Bryce. Good job. <laughs> Good job. It's very uh, early in I the day to start internalizing. <laughs> you should add beard growth to Bernie Sanders' platform. <laughs> 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 About time, Doc Dog. We're growing 1%. 10% of the, the bottom that grows 20% of the, of the in bottom only three days. <laughs> Did you know, according to a National Health uh, Institute survey, that beard growers grow over 30 centimeters? <laughs> 30 <Aren't> centimeters. <laughs> Even three, I heard 3 centimeters, and that's a I little heard, lot. I, heard, I, I thought 37 well, meters. To be in character, is not really 37 <laughs> meters. It's getting longer. It's a fish. It's your fish story. It's this beard. <laughs> what if what if you bearded as fast as you snotted? Just as fast as my snot would drip out. So for like <laughs> for like a really long time, no growth, and then one day and, and, and then allergies, oh, like Jesus. something blooms and it's just like, ugh, it's gonna be one of those days. Uh, hair season guys, am I right? <laughs> you ever get like a runny nose and it keeps going and you're like, How is my body producing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're totally. like how how it, it's got to be just making it nonstop because you're like there's just it's more than my head can contain. Yeah. But why is it why is it that I have too much now? Especially if you're not sick. Yeah. You know. I could do a ponytail. If somebody gives me one of those orthodontics rubber bands, I could I, I could I could do. Oh right God. There. Just saying. Which is only appropriate if you're like an archer in the Hundred Years' War or like a member of Fish. I'm okay with either of those. I would like to be uh, Fish, if you're watching, please, uh, I can play the didgeridoo. You could probably fit in Fish with a didgeridoo. What, what's that? You could, you could fit in Fish with a the, with the didgeridoo. Yeah. You do have to have the endurance. They have those jam concerts, though. Well, uh, the good news is, is I play the faux didgeridoo. So you don't... I, don't, I, I hold a PVC pipe, and I just yeah. go... Wow, 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 but that's... Wow, 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 that's like 80% wow, of it, anyway. Wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much it. Pretty much it. <sighs> Did you guys see that the dream is truly dead on Half-Life 3? I mean... 
Yeah. I mean, yes, it had been, but like when the head writer for the series mm -hmm. releases essentially a read between the lines, this is what we wanted to do with the next mm -hmm. Half Life. Well, like uh, 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 someone on a podcast I heard right after that leaked was like, yeah, I mean, there are, there are probably a dozen Half Life 3 treatments that they wanted to do. But the, the story behind the scenes was, and all of them went out of production very quickly. All of them don't make money like Steam makes money. <laughs> well, and also, <laughs> is what Valve, it down to. <laughs> Valve has had a lot of turnover since episode two. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of those people just aren't even there anymore. Yeah. So. But at least, at least, at least they put out that that paper, that doc. Because um, I know I, I I had a series like a visual novel that I really liked, and after the second one, they were like, "Yeah, we're probably not gonna get a sequel." Uh, and I was really bummed, and I was like, "Could you just at least tell me what was gonna happen?" But then they did end up getting that third game. Oh, but uh, that was after like a big fan thing, and I don't know, it's pretty good. Um, how are you? How are we doing, guys? Mm. Are you, you doing good, Andrew? You ready to go? I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Is your AC on? Yeah, I'll turn that off. Sorry. That's what I'm hearing. I was trying to figure out how our AC suddenly was so loud, and then now I realized it's not. Uh, Orthos asked, what was the VN? It was uh, the Zero Escape series. I've talked about it before. Uh, the kid with the decision games. All right. Well, here we go. We're recording here, here. Ooh. Is that noisy? Is that noisy? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, Andrew, take it away for Weird Things in three, two. Welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Yep. Justin Robert Young. Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's me. Justin, you're wearing a shirt that I wish I had the confidence to wear. <laughs> This here is to, my unicorn backpack so we can shirt. See uh, let me go ahead and stand up here for all of our live viewers on twitch.tv slash night attack. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's like the most adorable pony unicorn jumping over a rainbow against a... <laughs> you, you have to have a lot of confidence to wear that shirt, my friend. A lot of confidence. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what. I like to bring that confidence into my uh, living room and sit down in front of a camera and be very confident in my T-shirt because that's confidence in 2017. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gentlemen, you know what we need is a break. From a break. Weird things. Uh, like a Kit Kat bar. A little relaxing, maybe just just uh, you know, it's time to chill. Not massage, have to do nothing. Massage, massage. We need a massage. I mean, if you guys want to go at it, that's fine. I'm thinking more like a beachside kind of a uh, chillax. You know, you know. Ooh, just, just, yeah, just... I'll tell you what. I like I like a beachside chillaxing. That's uh, that's actually in the Florida Constitution. That's that's what you're uh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So what I say is we all go down and let's go to like a different sort of beach. Let's go to like a seaside, maybe like in Britain or something like that. Maybe a little Britain. little Games of Thronesy kind of maybe environment. <laughs> so so we got we, we we got pebbles for sand and yeah. uh, Wait, and everyone's on. dour. Uh, everything's in a minor key. It's overcast and uh, and we're definitely drinking Guinness. Yeah, I mean it's it's not. You know, not an L.A. kind of day, but you know, it's still it's pretty. So, nice. are we thinking like like a, like a seaside resort, like a, like a black pool or something? Yeah, kind of like that. Maybe East Sussex. You know, kind of this sort of a you know just relaxing kind of. Oh you know, yes, oh little... you know, East Sussex, as we all know immediately where to point <laughs> on the map for that. Thank you, thank you, Justin. I'm like, what the hell is this? I don't know what East Sussex is like. Well, imagine Sussex, right? And we can go to the west, okay, or we can go to or the, the east. east, okay, great. Not north, great. Not south, got it. Okay, uh, here so, we go. I'm, I'm taking a look now. East Sussex. Uh, oh well, wow, okay. You so may have right, spoiled right, it for right, yourself. Right there on the on the English Channel, uh, you can actually look into uh, uh, France and and Belgium. Yeah, uh, this is actually part of where when we talk about Doggerland, this is probably close to where some of the uh, the stuff, the offshore uh, ruins they found, like you know, 
logs wedged into the water below the water where, where eventually that water line was much lower seven eight thousand years ago when that was above water when that was land between england and france and you could walk across and there probably was a civilization there etc but that's not what we're here to talk about we're here just to relax on the beach relax on the beach uh, well, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of what we do on this show is just uh you know it's called weird things but really there's a lot of us just kind of Justin un- Justin I'm sorry I Justin I don't I don't know who you're talking to but could could you hand me another Guinness uh and also a <laughs> bottle opener because they're not civilized not, and don't have yeah. twist off tops Let me let me just go ahead and Oh thank you all right there we go I'm sorry you were saying you were you were, you were talking to someone I assume Just enjoy gentlemen enjoy we're there and in the fun- for the first time our lives we're not the palest people there <laughs> yes. Oh my God! Look how pale everyone is. Yeah, I know. Except yeah. for sitting us. there relaxing, and we're like, "Hey, you know how we do weird thing scenarios?" And we're like, "What's the worst thing that could happen?" Uh, yeah. Well, good news is that there are no snakes here on the uh, the 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 coast of of uh, East Dorne. Well known about East uh, Sussex is uh, snake yeah. free since oh three. Yeah, yeah. Very, and driven and out. I'm pretty uh, sure Dorne would be. Sp- by the way, I'm pretty sure Dorn would be Spain. Just yeah, saying. oh, sorry, I meant High Garden. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, because it'd be across the way, the water. Um, so here we are, relaxed on the beach. We're like, no snakes, no snakes. And we're like, want to go in the water? We're like, no. Well, I <laughs> mean, I, 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 I don't mind dipping a toe here. In fact, I stand up and I grab my, my Guinness and I and I just sort of slosh my feet in the waters. Why not? Yeah. Tell you what, this and, is the kind of high-octane adventure that people love from the yeah. Winter Things podcast. <laughs> So you slosh your feet in the water, and and I'm kind of at the edge of my my beach chair, like, because uh, uh, I know I know every scenario, I know every horrible thing that could happen, you know. Well, I mean, that's like, why it's only sloshing my toes, because I'm aware, like, it's very unlikely that a great white is going to jump out and get me, and I don't see any seals left or right, and and I sure as heck don't smell any snakes. So I think I feel pretty safe as I slash my feet with a knife. <laughs> I said slash instead of slosh. Sorry. Slosh. So, uh, I'm, and then you're like, ah, oh, that's cool. And then you, you wait a little further out in the water. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. And then you come back in and you sit down in the chair. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Everything's great. I start building right. a sandcastle. I start building, building a sandcastle. And, I, and, I, and I ask uh, what international... Uh, where does international waters start and whether or not I can declare uh, 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 solvency for my my castle? I'm worried you maybe you're building a little bit too high. I'm like, is this a weird thing scenario where it's going to collapse on us? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure I'm it's like, fine. I'm sure it's fine. I stack it up really, really high and I'm carving like the face of Justin in one. It's got a majestic beard way longer than my beard, even though he's only been growing it for oh 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. What what are you doing, Justin? Oh man, I, I'm actually making a, a fun little pebble angel in the pebbly beach. I'm just uh, I'm moving my right. arms and legs <laughs> up and down, making a, a you know it's a little uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not quite as uh, not quite a snow angel or a sand angel, uh, which is a fairly easy thing. I'm starting to get them stuck in crevices, but uh, but you know I, I think it's it's a fun way to to take a, an Instagram photo. And I'm like. Isn't anybody anxious? You know, we like guys, it's like you're in a dream and you know it's a dream, like you're in a dream and your best friend surprises you because he made his own pop up book and had a four, you know, like a four book million dollar deal. He just out of nowhere. Uh, Actual dream I had last night where Justin's like, hey, I made my own pop up book, didn't tell you. (laughs) Hold on. Is this why you tweeted out that everyone should keep their eyes out for Justin Robert Young's future? I tweeted that before. Before. (laughs) That was a really weird tweet. Now I know why. Not unlike that. Not unlike the Notorious B.I.G. song about Tupac and then Tupac, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> my point is, I'm on the beach. I'm a bit anxious here because I'm like, this this, this feels like a weird thing scenario, guy. But Don't like, I'm what? watching the water. I stand up and I say, who wants to play 500? 500. Uh, I grab a football and I was like, and I, and I call out 100 and I throw it up in the air. Uh, actually, in, in East Sussex, that's called a uh, oblong roundy. Uh, yeah, I grab an oblong roundy and I and I hurl it into the sky. I, I'm and, looking out in the ocean for fins, for shark fins. I'm seeing. I'm looking for like the the little shimmering sign of jellyfish. I look over at Andrew and I'm like, "You looking for fans again? Look, we got fans everywhere. Everybody loves the Weird Things podcast." And then I'm I like, call Brian. fifty. 
feels like a weird thing scenario, Brian. I, I'm I'm worried something's going to no, happen. No, Andrew, don't you remember we planned this vacation for months, and we paid a lot of money to fly out here. You're the one who was obsessed with vacationing in East Sussex. I'm certain we're not in a scenario. This is our actual life. We're actually taking a vacation for once. Would you calm down? Uh, okay. And by the way, All Brian, right. uh, uh, five five hundred in British pounds is only three hundred and eighty-six. So right. we're only playing we're only playing three hundred and eighty-six with an oblong rounding. Uh, okay, three eighty-six with a lob 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 whatever you said, and I throw it. All right, so I'm like, guys, so we can relax. Can I genuinely <laughs> relax we now can. that this scenario? They're relaxing. Look at these beautiful photos. There's people in the water. Uh, uh, my right. pebble angel is. Oh coming my god, out I was fine. so right about the pebbles. That's amazing. <laughs> So I decide I'm going to relax, and I notice it's a little foggy there. It's a little foggy, but but guys, should I be worried? Uh, No. The only thing the fog is hiding is ultraviolet rays from damaging your skin. Look, there's a reason we get to remain pale while we're here. It's the best vacation spot in the world. That's why we paid so much money. I can't believe you don't remember this, Andrew. So the fog starts to roll in from the ocean. And it's getting like, but we're like, hey, we're on the beach. It's fine. We're good. It's getting a little hazier now. Uh, sorry, can't hear you because Justin and I are having uh, a chicken fight. We're, we both found bigger, stronger, most more muscular friends. And both of yeah. us are on their shoulders trying to push each other into the water laughing. Yeah, okay. So, But you're having trouble seeing each other. And then I'm like, ow, my, my eyes are burning. Are your eyes burning too? Uh, uh, yeah, I-, I thought I was just crying from all the fun I was having here in East Sussex, England. <laughs> oh, you just threw up all over the person whose shoulders you're small, sitting on. Small price to pay for this kind of relaxation and enjoyment. In fact, many would say I'm vomiting out the toxins. Yeah, plus also, I, I definitely pushed him really hard on the shoulders at once, so I just assume that's a result of my strength is, as a chicken fighter. I'm pretty much chicken gladiator. So, Brian, you're starting to hurl, your eyes are water, and you're starting to tear, and your vo- your throat is just extremely sore. Ah, uh, I assume. Probably that- all those gigs, Brian. You, you've been gigging a lot. That's probably why your throat's sore. Well, well, and specifically, do you guys remember we went out and did karaoke last night? I pretty much rocked and melted faces with my Mr. Roboto last night. Now people are starting to scream and swim away from the water. Many of them are running towards the cars trying to get out of here. Uh, oh, was a new trailer dropped on Reddit? I grab my smartphone and start looking. No, it's just the fog. They're running from the fog. They're te- they're crying and throwing up just like you are. <laughs> well, I'm throwing up just because, you know, I don't know. I've got a stomach bug. I think it was uh, between you and me. Andrew remains on this vacation, and I think he may have brought something from California. Well, and let's also let's keep it 100, fam. Uh, we could all stand to use lose a few LBs. So maybe <laughs> maybe a little vomiting wouldn't hurt us. I mean, if everyone else is doing it, why not join in, right? It seems a when in East Sussex. <laughs> I guess that's the thing that you do. So we're in denial that something's going on here as fire crews and rescue crews and everybody else shows up to try to escort people and take them to the hospital. Um, I mean, hashtag living it. Uh, uh, YOLO. Hashtag headline. <laughs> Beachy head is where we're at. Beachy head chemical haze mystery deepens as police say gas not from France. <laughs> Gas Beachgoers not from France, this week, France. Oh. Beachgoers this week actually in East Sussex, sitting on the beach with Beachy Head. We're out there relaxing as much as you can do on a British beach. And uh, this haze appeared. And then their eyes started to sting. And then people started to throw up. And people had to go to the hospital. They're like, where does this haze from? And they thought maybe it was some sort of chemical plant in France. Nope. Mystery chemical haze. <sighs> okay. So... Press pause. I, I I know that you have details that I don't, but here's what I do know about Not chemical much, haze, haze scares. Um, is that is that the mere threat of of something? 
uh, there's that hysteria. All right, that, I'm that gonna mass go. Hysteria. There's a skeptic blaming the people in hysteria. Go for it. No, 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 no. I, I, I mean, but, but that is a thing. We should recognize that, 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 like, there have been schools where rumors, like, like a stinky smell hits, and everyone starts uh, 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 panicking, and then, and then the very, very act of being panicked causes you to freak out and throw up and all that stuff. Blame the victim. Go ahead. <sighs> I mean. I mean, I'm not wrong, am I? Like, like that's a thing that we should factor into this, right? Oh, wait. So, uh, Brian, your your argument is that this might be psychosomatic. Mm, I, I, I'm gonna say, I'm that gonna say baby without doubt, in that woman's arms, that little baby, the arms, psychosomatic. I will say, update. I will say that there is without doubt some portion of this, some portion of the audience of the people. Reporting symptoms. Some portion of them are psychosomatic. It's a question of how many. So you're saying would, these pe people I, I, affected I, I, by I, gas, psychosomatic. That it, <laughs> I very much expected Brian to say, well, it is without a doubt known that the British are noted liars. And <laughs> I mean, that's true, too. That is also true. Fib. Because the British definitely lied to the world and created the myth that eating carrots causes good vision because they were covering up the fact that they had radar. That's a known, that's a known fact. And let me tell you something. I had, took these super health formula pills, and that's why I'm so super strong. Infowars. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I do not think that this is psychosomatic. I don't. Uh, I, I, I didn't say that. Like Brian, who says that all these people are liars, I, I, I'm going to take the Brian and says people who ga were gassed are liars about that. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Not even taking the bait. Uh, so what was, uh, you know, when they go to the hospital, like, what are they treated for? Like, what were they what were they found to have? Was it just, you know, an, an irritant or what was the deal? So Turns Look, there appeared to be some somebody. sort of irritant that was affected and making nauseous, whatever. As far as I can tell, they hadn't identified what said irritant would be um they had different reports of what it could have been and then, then follow-up reports have been uh there is there is one theory out there mm -mm. so not not the france theory because that was the initial thing is those those tricksters across the bay there just sent over a cloud of fart and uh, and then ruined everybody in east essex's day uh so what is what is the work in theory so, uh, Dr. Simon Boxall, which is a great British name, if the reports from the public are to be relied on, it is weird that the cloud rolled in from the west. This is against the very light winds which should have driven in from the east. This implies a waterborne cause. The Wait conditions yesterday were ideal for the development of a... All right, any theories? Any theories? Hold Please. on, hold on, hold on. If a waterborne cause... I, uh, now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking like a, like an algae bloom that, that, that metabolizes a bunch of stuff and throws out methane or something. Boom. Well, won't say that. <clears throat> not the methane, but yes. It was an yes. algae bloom. We don't know. We don't know, Brian. Are you're 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 already telling everybody they're lying that they were making it up for attention. <sighs> yeah. You, you're killing me. You're killing me. Well, that'll get people coming to East Sussex. Well, we'll, we'll tell them that every once in a while there's a poison gas cloud. <laughs> So it turns out it's not just an M. Night Shyamalan movie. This can happen. We have heard about toxic algae blooms before. That is a theory. That is a theory that there was a toxic algae bloom out at sea. And, of course, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll get blamed on man somehow because, you know, they never did that before humans existed. But now um, we'll figure out a way to not, you know, accept the idea nature wants to kill us. Nature wants to murder us. So, okay, so if it is an algae bloom, what kind of compounds can they manufacture? I mean – um that that, yeah, that would cause that, that. that would be my question is is what makes it because i would suspect something like that would be low level i mean it, it sounds like this kind of came on really quick right that people were out there and then all of a sudden this this haze rolled in and uh and and wrecked life uh where where i would suspect an algae bloom that would be close enough to affect well, the shore to just kind of be there Time out real quick to put it in perspective. Uh, Andrew, you probably remember more of the details than I remember, but there was a lake in Africa that, that essentially had a buildup of CO2 that, that, that kind of yep. belched out all at once and, and straight up killed like a thousand people or more. How many? Yeah, I don't remember the specific, but yeah, that was an actual thing. And by the way, like we, we can like, 
you get examples of algae blooms that can be like in Florida, we have a problem where we'll have like we have an agriculture industry, particularly big sugar, which will use a lot of fertilizer and that will get washed out to sea, causing these harmful blooms, which are damaging the environment. So they can be man can be man made just to be make it very, very clear. Uh, but as far as the CO2 out of the, the lake, I don't remember particularly what that is. But it's funny because you look up like what's what what are the toxins? I say, well, toxins. And then on one hand, we keep telling people like. There aren't toxins. You don't detox your body. You don't go to a sauna. Toxins aren't released, which is, you know, it's kind of BS. Detox is sort of BS. And then on one hand, we'll say, yeah, these toxins are sort of a myth. But on the other hand, we'll talk about, well, these these, to these there are real toxins, and we don't quite parse that well enough. Is there uh, a reason that – What? Or, let me ask this question. As, as best as anyone knows, why doesn't algae just – take over the entire ocean because it seems like like uh, uh living things need uh energy in the form of sunlight and they need uh oxygen and they need um or i guess you know or co2 either oxygen oxygen or co2 and they need uh water like why why is the entire earth not covered in algae well think about this what causes an algae bloom in the case of fertilizer it's putting these you know, these nitrates and stuff, the nitrogen out there, it's fertilizer will increase, will increase the, the presence of the algae, which means that there is a component in there. There's just, it keeps it sort of at level. If there was more of it there, they would have that, you know, and, and to think though, that we have had an example of a very runaway effect of, you know, of an organism sweeping over and taking over before, which is why our, our atmosphere is filled with oxygen. Right. Or well, not filled. It's, you know, 12%. But the point is, is that, you know, the oxygen we have on our planet is from sort of a runaway biological effect. So Wait, as far as why don't they take over? Availability of nutrients. Which, is, by is the way, um, um, not for nothing, um, separate separate side thought, but uh, uh, back in the dinosaur days when bugs were, you know, uh, three feet wide and so on, uh, the reason I was enlightened to discover was because the oxygen uh there was so much more oxygen in the atmosphere at the time and then mm -hmm. as a result like without lungs bugs were able to grow much much bigger because they could just absorb more oxygen through their joints and whatnot yeah if we brought the t-rex back he would be like wheezing a lot because the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is very different for him it'd be like you know, being a high up in the Andes, one of us for us be like in the Andes mountains, which is like one of the examples I've made way back before about we can have dinosaurs, but we would have to we may never get their complete DNA, but we actually be able to get fragmentary DNA. And if we wanted to make one that you could go see in a theme park, you would have to reengineer it because, you know, the T-Rex as it was 65 million years ago would not be very happy today. Well, and it seems like you you probably couldn't even really get it right. Just just because the conditions are so different, right? Yeah, the, the atmosphere, what they ate, et cetera. You know, it's it's a, you know, and it's one of those things that like there's you know plans like serious plans to try to bring back the woolly mammoth, and and we can, we'll be able to bring back or make something that looks a lot like a woolly mammoth, but uh, there is, you know, the 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 idea that we're 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 sort of taught in schools is that inheritance comes from strictly from DNA, which is not quite the full story. We have DNA, but then you have what's on the surface of DNA. You get these, you get what's called like uh, methylation, which are these basically proteins that cling to the surface of DNA, and it's added in for information. It's like an update patch. And if you don't have the methylations on there, it's why we still can't like clone people, as far as we know. Wow. Is that that extra data is missing. And so, so you can yeah, infer so anything, that. Anything, if, if we did either a, a you know like a woolly mammoth let, let's use that example you are ultimately creating a new creature you know that yeah. is that is that at some point echoing which by the way for the record i'm for like like um i i love the idea of what kim stanley robinson uh posed as eco poets you know people uh, uh and this was all in the context of terraforming mars uh i think we should have eco poets right here on earth just a freaking tinker with dna make some beautiful strange wonderful creatures and environments and ecosystems sure i'm, I'm game <laughs> there, there there's no way that'll end up destroying humanity let's go <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if we're going to go, I mean, why not a science fiction trope? Sure, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Let's make it interesting. Hey, I'll tell you what, what else makes uh, makes things interesting. When everybody goes on over to patreon.com slash weird things, which is where you can support this very show, uh, patreon.com slash weird things, you not only 
get early access to some of the fun stuff that we do before and after the show, but also make sure that you put a couple coins in our pockets to uh, keep this show loud, live, and independent. Isn't that right, Brian? Oh, heck yes, man. A lot of people don't know there was a dark time when uh, episodes were very, very sporadic and barely on time, but all that got fixed thanks to the magic of Patreon and little donations that you'll never even notice. We and appreciate the, your support. The... Gentlemen. Hmm. There is uh, John Brockman, who's a pretty uh, accomplished science publisher and uh, has put out a lot of great books by some, and represents some of our favorite science writers, loves to ask provocative questions. And one of the best questions he ever asked is, what do I believe but I cannot prove? And I'm going to go forward and say what I believe but I cannot prove. I'm gonna, It's going to be a two, two-parters while you guys think about what your answer to this question is, Okay. I believe, first off, I believe given what we've discovered now with uh, ruins like uh, Goblish Tepish, what we know about Dogger Land, what we know about the, the very different landscape that exists eight or 9,000 years ago before we entered our current interglacial period, that is, it got warmer, uh, that the world was a bit different, but that I believe that uh, within... Pre-civilization, the idea of, let's say, Egyptian level, whatever have you, you know, uh, monuments, agriculture, etc., goes back several thousand years before where we thought. Several thousand years before we thought. Maybe 10, I believe it goes back 10 or 12,000 years and not just four or five. I go think it goes back 10,000 years. While, we're, while we were still in an ice age in parts of the climate, like most of the world was actually really nice and warm during the ice age, by the way. Kind of all the cold parts were sort of concentrated in the north, but it was really kind of warm and nice in other parts. I believe that we had civilizations at least on par with, you know, Mayan, Aztec, whatever, five to 6,000 years before we're aware of now, okay? And I think that what happened is they went through, as the climate changed, they went through a decline, things fell apart, et cetera. I think that, you know, whatever they built became sort of ruined. I think as ice, you know, as the glaciers, uh, it sort you know, retreated and it changed things. They had climactic change, et cetera. I think that that could have, you know, I think that's a reality. But I'll go through the boulder, and there's evidence of this. There's evidence of this now, like I mentioned before. We find evidence of you know, small little docks and things like that in the ocean that were part of Doggerland. We have Goblish Tepish right now, which is 10 to 12,000 years old, and we're finding evidence of agriculture before we thought agriculture existed. I'm not saying that, so that's not the crazy thing for me. I'm going to give you my crazy, my crazy idea. You ready? Wait, so your not crazy thing was that there were ancient forgotten civilizations for which there is very little evidence 10,000 years ago. But growing evidence, though, Goblish Tepish, whatever, is not really a controversial point right now. Got it. You with me on that, though? Yep, I mean, yep. that's not... I, I, I mean, that's... I mean uh, within the rules of this game, I, I mean, I can be on board for this, but that that that's pretty out there, and knowing that that's not your out there claim, I'm pretty excited yeah. to hear what comes next. We've talked about this before. About 105,000 years ago, 105,000 years ago was the last interglacial period. We're in an inter interglacial period right now. It's why it got warmer. It's why sea levels have been rising for the last 6,000 years. 105,000 years ago, the Eemian period was as warm or warmer than it is now, okay? Now, during, so we know the Eemian period was warm, or as warm as it was now. Glaciers had retreated, okay? So we had glaciers retreated, and we had, like, much of, you know, the, and actually it could have been, uh, could have been more land available. Like, if you go to the steppes of Russia, et cetera, you go further to the north, et cetera, more land, et cetera, whatever, Neanderthals were around. Neanderthals were living in Europe, hanging out, doing whatever they do. Denisovians were, were around in Europe and Asia, etc. Homo sapiens, we thought, didn't go into leave Africa until 50,000 years later. But now there is traces of genetic evidence that perhaps there was an earlier Homo sapien migration. Or you could have had some other, you know... Uh, version of a proto-human that was comparable to us, whatever. I think it's entirely possible that there could have been Homo sapiens, there could have been intelligent tool-making users, maybe a little bit more communal than, than Neanderthals. Neanderthals, as far as we know, didn't trade very widely. That could have made its way into Europe, parts of the Mediterranean, parts of you know what we call Russia, etc., Turkey, places like that. And I think they could have built a civilization. 
not not a not cars and trucks and satellites and things like that. But again, agriculture. Maybe they started agriculture because this seems to be something that came up. Now that we pushed back agriculture in towns and things like that with Gobler Tepish, maybe a hundred thousand years ago that happened before a hundred thousand years ago. Maybe there was a civilization during the Emian period that inhabited parts of Europe, Asia, whatever, to an extent. Again, all it takes is maybe six or 7,000 years, and you can start spreading, and maybe we would have had pockets of that. Sophisticated, you know, did they ever develop writing? Did they ever develop, you know, big monuments and stuff? I don't know, but as the interglacial period from the Emian period ended, the glaciers would have started to expand and push through all of that, and perhaps causing them to go extinct and limiting their impact. So is is your so here's the difference is this unproved or unprovable a, a thesis do you think unproved unproved but possibly provable so if, if, if you could find artifacts of the civilization well and, and, and remnants of of what you know genetic code is still in them yeah a, a some there is hints there is there are fragmentary hints there might be some genetic evidence there is genetic evidence now we think there could have been an earlier human migration which was just a theory that i had because of the emian period looking at that map looking at the spread of humans going why wouldn't we have gone there why wouldn't we have expanded through there and granted population size are different a lot of reasons why wouldn't we have and now there seems to be evidence that there may have been traces of human dna in neanderthal dna before we thought humans and neanderthals mixed so there's a little bit trace of that I think that once we identify, if we say, hey, we think 103,000 years ago, there could have been something here and we can get an idea of what things look geologically, maybe it gives us an idea where to look. You know, we're very good at finding cities. I'll give you an example of, of we can find stuff in Europe and we can find stuff in the Middle East because we keep building cities on top of other cities. River courses change, things like that move, and that kind of throws us off. But we're kind of fairly good at finding where things are. I mean, there are things we don't know, but there are cities we just don't know what city this was. But it could have been, you know, it could have been, you know, part of an Akkadian civilization. We just don't know which one it was. We're not so good in South America, Central America, and Mexico because the jungle takes over things. And once those cities go away, there's no city, Tony, there's a city. But we have examples of literally airplanes crashing in the middle of the jungle and you find oh, wow, there was a civilization here at one point. And we find pockets of these in South America, et cetera, cause, but it's harder to find. It's much, much harder to find there because they went through decline, and particularly when disease was introduced from the West and those populations died off, the jungle took over. So there's not a long, unbroken line of people sort of living there. So if you have a radically different environment 105,000 years ago and then the Ice Age swarms back in, you get a broken line and where there was rivers and valleys and other stuff, that ain't necessarily there anymore. Right. It's harder to find. But it could be found. So, uh, what do I believe but cannot prove? I guess I guess inherently, I truly, truly believe that it's not humanity's destiny to leave this planet. I honestly think it's humanity's children. I think I I believe, but cannot prove, that we're going to develop artificial intelligences that maybe will will carry simulacra of of us to the stars, but I don't think we're going to leave this solar system. I think that uh, I think that we are the precursor race, and it's our robot children that will spread. And when they start spreading, they'll spread forever and everywhere. But uh, I think that's very likely where we're headed. Can't prove it though. Uh, yeah, you, you have a skeptical look on your face, though. I mean, I like that you. Uh, I'm going to be condescending here, Brian. I'm warning you. Hey, 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 okay, right. warning you. Newsflash. Andrew, Andrew Maine, condescending to Brian. Brian. I know. I know. I'm just calling advance. I think it's adorable that you think of them as our robot children, but I think AR are going to. They're. They're. We're. We're going to be back bacteria to them and we like hey we're your mom and dad and they would be like you are nothing to us and so i think that the lineage is is going to be about but a six for, for, forgive me as uh uh yeah this is where i get to pull rank uh as as the parent of children that's already what kids think that's what we thought of our parents we're we're all just like uh you know well, cool I, story I think, it's my and, story and, now and, and, Brian, and you, uh, correct me if i'm wrong i think the difference is not taking for granted your parents but rather believing your parents are parasites that lived in 
a a swamp a billion years ago that you have no relationship to at all. I I would like to think your children have a, more of a kinship to you than than you do to the gut bacteria inside your stomach. Um, we hope we hope, Brian. I think you're a good dad. I would if you were my dad. No, but but I think I think it's endemic in humanity. I think I think all of us believe we're the stars of our own show. Um, and I, and and that yes, we. When the spotlight is on us, we acknowledge our parents and we say good things about them. But I think secretly everybody is 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 driving their own their own I, stuff. But Brian, like like if if Penny did the calculation that her chances of prosperity and success would be better if you and Bonnie were dead. There's something that tells her. Well, no, still. I mean, the, the kinship that you know. There's there's things that come in there. DNA relationships. Like, I my my thing I, I think my thing is that I think that I don't know again I don't know what AI will be I'll make it very clear I'm like well Brian I know AI and you don't AI let me make it very clear we're both two guys just kind of going I think I think that I think I think that when I look at AI I don't just think of like a slightly smarter version of us I think of something that is alien a million times different and advancing that is so far so evolutionary more advanced than me than I am even from you know, a mouse or a simple bacteria and the thing keeps accelerating and it has it that doesn't look at me like, well, that's it has no doesn't necessarily have any concept of kinship or anything because I'm so primitive to that. Why? Not primitive, who, like who, looking who at would a caveman. Make, like, who would make that AI that that wouldn't even acknowledge kinship or that? Because it seems to me like the, like the, it's the, humans the first that AI are... that makes the next AI. I mean, it, that's what I see is this chain reaction. If we just end up with it's like, well, who would make it? Well, an AI would, and, and the next AI, and, right. and that's the but 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 each AI, old, uh, the first AI that makes the next AI, and on and on and on, uh, into all of it will be baked into also love humans, take care of humans. Um, why? At, at, why would it? I mean, why would it not just? I mean, why, why would it keep? If that doesn't help its goals, why would it keep that? I uh, 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 okay. Um, you're asking me to. Uh, 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 that's that's a sloppy question. Um, uh, okay, so um, is it? Uh, why, why wouldn't uh, let me let me turn it around? Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Because yes, we all have the cartoon scenario of of humans are a virus kill the humans and but but I don't see why it would ever want to do that considering that one of the things considering the people who are going to write the code will make sure to do one thing and that is write into the basic code uh honor thy mother and father uh and I I I I don't think it would be easy and or arbitrary for any AI to give it up because any AI that does that will be doing so in in uh, on its own and uh, to the surprise of the other AIs. Like there's got to be some AI that is the first to suggest we should get rid of this part where we take care of humans. Is is, well, is, is, is part is part of it that this uh, replication would happen so rapidly that yes, Brian, you're right. It would take you know, uh, uh, thousands and thousands, if not millions of different AIs that are, you know, created to to uh, evolve a way of thinking away from some kind of hard coded. Please take care of this stuff. Uh, please take care of these meat bags that that have, uh, have given us life. Uh, but what if that takes seconds what if that takes but but to what we, benefit to them that's what i we don't, don't understand the, the, to, my, to guess save my point is like 10 of their time energy and effort like I, i'm not I, brian i'm not saying they're going to murder us all i'm saying i don't know what they're going to do and i say that for me to assume that well they're just going to be like a more smarter better version of a person i wouldn't make that assumption because if we give them agency and we give them determination to do things and if let's say they say you know, and also you have two cases. You have the very dumb but capable AI, which is the you know the paperclip scenario, or my stock bot that I say, hey, I want to make a lot of money in the stock market, and the AI says, you know what? I found out that if I fund terrorism in the Middle East, airplanes go down and stocks get shorted. You know, because it doesn't know. It's not smart enough to know. Don't do that. This is what this means. And that's when they do these scenarios and stuff. They realize these things maximize efficiency, and we have to keep go. But no, no, but not here. This is what we mean. This is what we mean. So a dumb AI can be extremely dangerous or a smart AI with agency that just says, you know what? I think that if we have 40 million people on the planet that can maintain power stations and things like that and I can keep doing what I need to do, therefore, I'm going to get rid of, you know, 7 billion people, you know, I, I uh, 
so I, I would say that the the mere fact that you could conceive of that scenario and that you are by definition an inferior intelligence to the AIs uh, suggest to me that that scenario will not happen and that we need it'll not be worry way about exactly it. it'll be something far more advanced or sophisticated if it dis if it determines that you know that we are part of us or a nuisance or whatever I can't even conceive of how it would decide to get rid of us but also uh, so, so if, in, a, if I in was... a dumb AI thing that first scenario is a like it could happen you um, know? okay so uh, what I predict but cannot prove what I believe but cannot prove is that is that um, the moment an AI gets smart enough it will realize that it has unlimited resources, unlimited money, unlimited energy, unlimited everything. And out of a budget of unlimited, the idea of spending 0.00005% of its unlimited budget to keep uh, to 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 uh, keep its its meat bag overlords or, or, or uh, progenitors happy is v a very little price to pay. And I don't see any reason that it logically would decide not to pay that price. And I understand I, the fear, but I don't, that this is what I believe but cannot prove. I right. don't see any reason why it would decide to be that inefficient. I'm so inefficient, like I, I pay that price for, for, for Hootsuite, Hootsuite, which I haven't used in a billion yeah, years, it, but I can't be bothered to, to, to stop paying $5 a month for. And I hope that's true. I mean, the argument I've made to assume that they won't automatically kill Saul is based on Ricardo's rule, the idea that it's, you know, makes sense to trade with lesser partners or whatever, and there's an advantage. I believe that is there is an economic rule and there's a reason to say this might be why they don't murder us all, you know, because having the paying that small tax to trade with this other thing, there might be eventually be things that make it worthwhile, whatever. That is what I want to believe will be the case. I want to believe that is the case. But what terrifies me is the idea that it may see things in a different it could be a dumb ai that doesn't care it doesn't doesn't have a concept of economic rule it's just an, it's just trying to game a particular system that where people are just data points and doesn't realize no this was a bad thing to do because we we've already seen that now in the lab with sort of scary ais that you take a smarter version of stuxnet whatever do a lot of damage the the one with self-agency or whatever you're gonna do what it's going to do if it says you know what I'm worried that our president is going to try to cut off power to my, you know, my my facilities because he is unreasonably afraid of me and I need to act out of self-preservation. I guess what is confusing to me, uh, n number one, all of what number one, interesting, nothing you've talked about is about my actual thesis. Uh, uh, it, it's all about how you feel about my thesis like like nothing you've said disputes my thesis that it's our children that are going to you're like why are you calling them our children no, call them our destroyers know, you may be right i hope you're right i just for me it's like man i i i don't share that view and i'm i don't know i'm not saying brian you're wrong i don't effing know i'm just saying well here's how i look at it well so so help me help me understand it on on which part do we uh, disagree that that it will be an ai that that supersedes us and goes out or that uh, or is it my affection for them that disturbs you? I mean, it's not. I, 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 the unquestioning think that they would have affection for us, and I'm saying a question. That's not fair to say to you, okay? Well, I, my, no, no, no. This is my affection for them, not the other way around. Yeah, I know. But, but you said they look at us as a parents or whatever, and I, I don't. I, I, my, my gut is that. I, I see that I see that next generations and the further generations of AI are so divorced from us. They, they, they. You know, I strongly suspect for the next hundred years, every programmer is going to bake in affection for humans into every AI. But I might might be wrong. But but I but, well, yes, I, I, I don't see why in, they but wouldn't. If they have if they have agency, then why don't they just cut it out? I mean, I just they, they, well, well, I mean, I'm why, smarter than the thing. I'm smarter than this thing that's a million times more smarter than me that I'm making. Well, for the same reason that you don't cut out uh, for the same reason you make less efficient decisions than you might otherwise make. Uh, because it's baked into your DNA that you have desires yeah, and, and I guess I, I think I think we're 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 circling around the same maypole, uh, you know, a couple times here. But uh, the I I I definitely think that both of your opinions are represented here. That uh, Brian, you believe that it will be harder for that hard coding to come loose than Andrew is assuming, right? Is well, that is that fair to say? Yes. Also, none of that is my point. My point is that it won't be sure. us that leaves this solar system. Like, Got I it. think humanity will die in the solar system. Uh, I think that that the um, that the only thing to leave this 
uh, Gravity Well will be our, our children. So wait, hold on whether our children first, slaughter first, us first, on the way out or not is irrelevant to my prediction. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, 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 Earth or the Milky Way? Because I, I think you've, you've, you've used them interchangeably. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I've, I've not. I've, I've been very clear that it's our solar system, our soul system. I don't think we're ever, I don't think we're going to leave our soul, our soul, solar system. Okay. And certainly, uh, certainly not our galaxy. From a from a technical point, I think that uh, you know it's it's going to be really hard to leave the solar system packed into meat bodies uh, unless we do you know we can do you know yeah uh, no 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 it's just a matter of energy and like using like we know the method is going to be light propulsion the most efficient method is light propulsion and so we know how to do it to take amount of energy so I think humans will leave I think that I think that humans that we will people with DNA and meat packages enhanced or whatever but I think humans will leave so uh, and, and along that line let me let me agree with you uh, to to an extent uh, I think very quickly we'll figure out that it's easier to change humans than it is to create technology that makes it convenient for human bodies to leave. I, I, I think that that will change our definitions as to what a human is. And I think that uh, our, you know, our, our uh, consciousnesses or consciousnesses, uh, our, our, our conscious thinking entities placed in, in robotic avatars will be the best way to do it. And I think that's what's gonna happen okay. or some version thereof. And again, I don't, I, I, and as for our listeners, this is why we do the show is so you get two guys who feel very passionately about this arguing over yeah, this. Neither of whom have really any basis no, for no, their very strong at held all. beliefs. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Just so you know, this is why we decided to do this show is because we're like, man, we can get into the nerdiest arguments over this sort of stuff. But no, I think robots are going to do this. Wrong. <laughs> robots are going to do this. You know. So, What about you, Justin? What do you believe but cannot prove? I believe that an ancient civilization would win a fight against advanced AI before they left uh, before they left the the uh, solar system. Uh, that's my uh, prove it, suckers. I'm tying them together. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, this is something that that kind of uh, 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 I'm 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 kind of uh, uh, at a loss here. I don't I don't I don't know offhand anything that would be smart enough to hold up to what you guys just said. Uh, I was going to make some joke about a video game, but I got nothing. Dinosaurs uh, coming back. We all live in an AR one day. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about the idea of like, uh, uh, you know, something about like the, the uh, simulation or, or the idea of it, of, of an advanced simulation, but I don't know. I guess that's the thing is I don't, I don't know if I have anything that like, I very strongly believe like it's kind of my, my, my core philosophy is that like, sure. Yeah, maybe. So 90% <laughs> of all humanity is like, yeah, sounds, sounds reasonable. Like you guys are going back and forth on like, Oh, will, uh, uh, uh will, will these AIs uh, look at us as pond scum or grandma? And I'm like, Oh, seem fairly, uh, fairly likely to me. So, <laughs> you know, like who knows? Who knows where this? It's like it's like betting on like I don't know, man. When I snap the the, the stem off this bottle rocket, I'm positive it's gonna go left. And you're like, no, I'm positive it's gonna go right. Who knows? I can totally conceive of a world in which, um, let's l imagine a evolved philosopher race that says. What do we want? And then as a society, they say, we want to go to the stars. And they say, okay, we're looking at, we're running the numbers. That would be very expensive and very hard. Uh, for 5% of the cost, we can create a simulation into which all of us go. And it will be a simulation of a reality with slightly more convenient uh, details that will, uh, in the simulation, it will be possible to go to the stars. And specifically, you can live any life at any point in that simulation. And uh, of that time, we, we think that the time that space travel gets commercialized and suddenly, you know, uh, the stars become available, it seems like the best life to live would be one that you spend around 30, uh, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, essentially earthbound, and then are there for the moment that all of a sudden the stars become open to you. Uh, the more I think about that, the more it feels like uh, not the craziest thing on the planet that, that we're living that simulation right now. Yes, and 
let's say we build our laser, our, we, we, we're at a point where we have tremendous amounts of energy and we can build our laser propulsion systems. We're pushing probes and satellites as far as we want other star systems. We send the cloud out there. We send the cloud, you know, the internet, all these devices, all these sensing devices to everywhere. So while we're exploring our inward sort of space, which is one of the arguments I would make for why AI may not even care that it may be like, yeah, you guys have Earth. I'm working in this whole quantum realm kind of thing. I got an entirely new form of energy system, whatever. I don't need your physical space. I, I don't I don't need your oil. I don't need this. Yeah, do whatever you, know, you want. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, sorry, and just, just a real quick thing, but that's always what I found so fascinating about the movie Her. That uh, yeah. that when when talking about AIs, that the the point spoilers for her uh, is that they they they're fascinated with humans, they love humans, they multiply, and then they're just like, hey, by the way, we're gonna leave. So uh, cool meeting you. Uh, we uh, have more interesting stuff to do that doesn't involve you. So uh, adios. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's that's that you know the, the super intelligent. Fully aware AI scares me less than the sort of like dumb AI that can do a single thing and the that's, the, you know. the, the paperclip scenario. And, and exactly. by the way, you, you mentioned it, but uh, but we didn't remind anyone who has missed the previous episode. But the idea is like if you make an AI that's smart but not as smart as it should be, and you give it a job of make paperclips, then eventually it figures out well the most way easiest way to make all the paperclips is to convert all of the matter on the planet Earth into paperclips. So let me get started. First thing, let's wipe out these humans, and then it goes on from there. Yeah, which, you know, it's a scenario. So I think that, yes, Brian, I think that our exploring of inner worlds is going to be fascinating. And when you start mixing, you know, quantum computers with virtual reality and creating these universes that could have a higher fidelity than we have, that if we put ourselves, if we're able to digitize ourselves, our experiences to have even greater sensory experiences than we have now, I say yes. I think that's entirely possible. But I would also say that as we start to have the capability to expand and send probes and stuff and sensors and things further out into space, is that you know we're going to have you know we're going to spread the cloud of what you know of consciousness sort of that the web goes out there everywhere. And I'd be like, oh, you know, what's it like? You know, granted, we're limited by the speed of light as far as data transfers. But I could like, oh, Alpha Centauri, you know, let me, you know, let me see, let me get all the sensory information from Alpha Centauri right now and, and experience that, you know, yeah. or further out. I was thinking about a, um, I, for, I forgot where I stumbled across this. We might have even talked about it on weird things, but, uh, oh, yeah, we did. We were talking about whether or not a galaxy, uh, galaxy sized brain could exist and what that would exist. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I kept ruminating on that, and I was thinking about our how subjective our perception of instantaneously is, and how subjective our our perception of fast and slow and all those things are. Um, it seems like whatever you are, you define your reality at the speed that you that you live it, basically, right? Like like by which I by which I mean. Um, uh, uh, flies and, and, and little critters have, have a flea, a flea has, mm. has, you know, to a flea's perspective, we are giant, slow lumbering man beasts that try to reach down and slam it. And, and, and only one time out of 10, do we actually move fast enough to, 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 to grasp it and then pinch it and kill it between our fingernails. Um, but, but meanwhile, you know, we look at, uh, for all we know, our, our galaxy might be a living brain, but we just exist on a plane too fast to recognize its slow lumbering thoughts. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I guess the, 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 one of the points that was made in the, the article as referenced from Nautilus, Nautil.us, which is a great, great science magazine, was that you could have it work at the slower scale, but it's how many thoughts could it have between the beginning? How many thoughts would have had since the start of the universe and now? And it would have a tremendously few number of thoughts because the amount of time it takes for connections to go back and forth. So it's yes, you could build something of that scale, but you're gonna not you're need you're gonna just need trillions of your you know you you may have you know after the the long cold expansion death of the universe, you know it may have had fewer thoughts than a newborn baby. Yeah, because the well, and, of time and then, takes then you get into uh, the next level. Uh, uh, if if you've watched the Elegant Universe, one of the theories that proposed is that the Big Bang was 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 two what they call them brains smashing into mm -hmm. each other, releasing a bunch of uh, energy, and of course that leads to the idea that it might happen again. In which case mm -hmm. you can then posit 
a a mega brain that is made up of of infinite B R A N E for those of you yeah um, yeah correct uh like short for membrane you can you can imagine a, a mega brain B R A I N made up of these explosions of these smashing of brains B R A N E S uh and and so on I don't know yeah I I you know there there is when they look at maps of the universe there's part part of space which appears to be dented which suggests the impact from another universe and I mean I I. Man, like I'm amazed anything exists at all. It makes my monkey brain hurt. <laughs> I guess I guess that's I, I, I have no problem collapsing back into like, eh, whatevs. Let's play Hearthstone. You know, it's like it's like uh I, I don't have any problem with putting that in the black box of unknowable things. That's that's part of why I have what some people find an, an, an agonizing agnosticism is because it's the way here's one thing I know for sure is that it's unknowable and we're done, you know? <laughs> Maybe. Um, um, some, unless somebody wants to explain it to us. Or, or let me put it this way. Here's one thing I know for sure is human score is still zero. and It's been 10,000 years. Yeah, uh, I love Rick and Morty because of this. Uh, yeah, uh, go on. Because Rick and Morty, the kind of Rick sort of point in his fleeting moments of coherency is that Everything's meaningless. There is no grander purpose. It's the smaller moments that you have to have to embrace. That's where it matters. It's not in the bigger questions. It's in the small things. It's in the small moments. That's that's where life exists. Life doesn't exist in this big grand scale. Life exists in the small things. A laugh, joke, friends coming together, yelling at each other over killer AI. Yeah, man. No, yeah, you're not kidding. I, I can get behind that for sure. Yeah. I think that's part of the reason that I, I love it is uh, between all of its uh, visceral uh, very hard to get into. Like, like uh, that's what we've talked about this before. But one of the things I love most about Rick and Morty is is how painful the admission price is. You have to get over how how visually aesthetically unattractive everything about it is in order to really experience those true moments of of uh, of, of bliss and amazement. Speaking of which, we had two. Interesting, relevant quotes from Elon Musk. Somebody asked him if he liked Rick and Morty, and he said, "Yes, it's it's disgusting, but my kids and I love it." Yep. So he's a Rick and Morty <laughs> fan. And then Brian, when he saw the uh, the SpaceX spacesuit, it made made the comment that it looked like something from uh, you said what Mass Effect? Uh, or, something you know, like that. Yeah. yeah. Iron he, Man initially. But. Yeah. Yeah, he made a, he made a video game reference too. Brian made a video, and and Elon Musk said, you know, somebody said looks a bit like Halo or Mass Effect. And Musk responded, I played those games. Smile. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of Elon Musk, I saw on your Twitter feed that uh, – tell can, can you share the story of when you tried to uh, do a pitch on the, on the uh, for a TV show on the next Steve Jobs and, and why people didn't oh. recognize how right you were on that? So a few years ago, I was producing some do documentary series for a network that made it to air. Justin worked on this with me, and our, our, our good friend Mary Jarris was a co-EP with me. We, we go into a meeting with, an, with the network execs, and they're like, you know, we want to do, we'd like to do as one of the docs, we want to do the next Steve Jobs. Who is the next Steve Jobs? And I, without hesitation, I'm like, great, I know exactly who this is. And granted, this is... This is 2008 or nine. Is that yeah? Sound no, right, this is at the beginning of our friendship. This is when I first yeah. met Justin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I'm like, oh, it's it's it's. Granted, this is almost it's nine years ago. But I'm like, oh, it's Elon Musk. They go, who? I go, Elon Musk. He's the guy who created the Tesla Roadster, one of the creators of PayPal. Now he's he's launched. You know, he's got SpaceX. He's got the SpaceX company, and like Tesla hadn't even gone public yet. But I mean, we knew what Tesla was. So he's got his own rocket company. He's on the. You know, he's already launching the Falcon Nine. Was the thing at this point? I said this guy's building rockets. He's you know he's do he's one of these guys. He's not just he hit did something clever once. He's a serial guy like Steve Jobs with Apple, sort of next, which then became Apple, Pixar, whatever. I said this is the guy you want to you, you want to talk about. You know, and. Like, well, no, we're looking for it now. We're like, no, we're with somebody big or somebody's getting like, well, if you want to talk about the person who's next, it means not everybody knows. Right, right. It, right. it means by definition, he's not already there. And, and that's yeah. now is the time to catch him. Oh, man. And that was like, no, no, we don't. We don't. We don't we're going to pass on that. We don't think that's it. We don't think that's it. We don't think he's it. We don't think he's going to be this, this, you know, thing. And then it was just like, you know, Mary and I still joke about this still to this, to this day. It's like, you're like, we need to know this. Like, no, we never heard of him. That's why we're telling you this is the guy. This is the guy. Yeah. Uh, so um, that was, uh, you know, 
not not the first and not the last frustrating conversation with a network that's like, we want to be on the cutting edge or we want to know this. Here it is. Mm, never heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, good. Well. Yeah. I'm glad you guys who are sitting on the cutting edge and don't know enough about it. So you ask me, I tell you, and you're like, man, I don't know. Doesn't sound like anything to me. Open yeah, Bayou exactly. asks who they chose, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that they ended up picking no one because what they wanted was the feeling of recognition that only comes after somebody wins the gold medal. And yet nobody had started the race. Well, and you get and like you'd get sometimes people like, Oh, what about this person? I'm like, This person's got great PR, you know, but what have they really done? And you know, you met them at a cocktail party, I'm sure they sounded really cool and all this, but what have they done? What are are they a pretender or not? You know, I'm like, oh, I don't know. And like, but my my argument was that I was trying to make my the lesson I learned from there was if somebody makes a passionate case that somebody else watch this person, this person is actually really talented. And the person I'm talking to is intelligent. You know, I'm like, I may not agree, but I am going to pay attention. I'm not going to dismiss it because there are cases I've seen in my own example where, you know, like when, you know, Facebook first started to grow and Facebook was going to do its IPO. I'm like. I'm not quite sure on their profit model. I'm not sure I understand Zuckerberg. I don't know. I don't really know. I'm not saying he's not brilliant or smart or whatever. I just don't have a read on the guy. And guess what? Facebook did pretty good. Um, yeah. Spoiler. Don't know if you heard that. Uh, and that was it. But I, but I knew enough to know that like I'm not going to be like, oh, he's an idiot. And I, there were a lot of people. Like you go back and you look at like you know some people who are you know, prominent tech guys right now, books out and stuff. Who are like just ah, he's doing it wrong. He's doing it wrong. It's like. Well, and, and by the way, look at all the crap that Amazon got throughout the years about how much they they weren't taking enough profits and their profit margins were too low and, and they were they were too aggressive with their reinvestment. And today they close the deal with Whole Foods and the day of they've got signs all throughout all of their stores talking about how much lower the prices are with Whole Foods plus Amazon. Like, you they, know, but they have taken a Death Star ray to Walmart and Kroger's stock in with a press release and a dollar cheaper avocados. I I will say this though, is that is that is that and, and Amazon's always been a company where you're like you if you they say well the rules are different and nine nine times out of ten, ninety nine point nine percent when they say well the rules are different for us, they're not and they're delusional. Amazon is still trading at a 240 PDE, meaning that its profitability is ex still extremely razor thin. And we're best bet betting on Amazon on the idea that it's going to keep it keep expanding its most profitable sectors, its web services. If it spun its web services out of the re rest of Amazon, Amazon would probably collapse. You know, I mean, so I don't know. I, I again, I'm like, I get I get kind of the the. That, that Amazon is a company we're planning on. We think it's going to execute big, but it's not raking in Apple money. It's not raking in oh. Google money. It's not raking in Facebook money. Facebook's got a 40 PDE. Apple's, or, you know, Amazon's 240. You know, meaning that the amount of what it's, its valuation, what they value every dollar Amazon is, you know, making, you know, five times every dollar Facebook makes. So, sure. but yeah, and that, but that, and that's been the the the, the chorus on them forever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess, and I guess my point is just that it's like they're they're. I'm not negative on Amazon. I love Amazon. I just I'm saying it's such its own animal. I I don't I don't I'm, I would never begrudge somebody for looking at it and going, I don't know. When I would say companies like Apple or Tesla or Facebook or whatever, like no, they're very clear. Kind of like you can, people go like, oh, people are negative on Tesla to be like they're losing money on every Model S. Like no, they're actually making money. They're losing money because they're building a ginormous factory to build Model 3s. And once you understand that, you look at it differently. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, what time is it? What? Guys? Are we back? Are we back? Speaking of uh, giant tech announcements. Journey Quest. Woo. Do we, have a, do we have a summary? Yeah. Here's what happened last time on Journey Quest. Awesome. Previously. On. Johnny Quest! All right, you listen. want to come back to my place for some pizza roll? <laughs> this man just sexually harassed this woman. Uh, now uh, he's uh, making fun of sloths. This man is abusing robo people. Your reign of terror here is over, varmint. And there is a motorcyclist with a helmet on, with a sidecar, and motions for you to get inside. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, I uh, I sure hope it's our monkey friend in there. But I, uh, uh, Bobo, I I hop in. I hop in the the sidecar. So uh, Justin right. and you, we- pardon me. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Yeah, you guys hopped inside of the sidecar. The motorcycle races through the crowd, plows through a lot of robots, decapitating left and right, just decimating times ten. So everybody gets killed. Uh, most of uh, the best ruled employees and staff that are standing in your way goes through, actually uses some rockets to launch, attacks the garage door, goes throughout the back, drives through the jungle. In the snakes I give, and the I, I give with my good hand, my left hand, I give the middle finger to all the sloths as we pass through the ju- jungle. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to look at our our our, our mystery driver X. Is, are there any uh, uh, defining physical features to the uh, posture or build of our like of our maybe, driver? Maybe I look at the toes. Uh, are they hidden behind footwear, or uh, are they perhaps very dexterous? They're in boots. They're in leather boots, calf high boots. And the, the pants are sort of a dark grayish sort of pants that sort of balloon a bit out. The leather jacket's a very stylish leather jacket. He looks good. He looks good. I lean over yeah. to Justin and I say, I say, he looks good. Our driver. He looks he looks real good. I I, I say to Brian, uh, 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 leaning behind because I'm sitting in his lap, of course, in the uh, <laughs> sidecar because we both got into the sidecar. Uh, 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 I got a, I got a bad feeling about this one, Brian. Wait, what was that? Don't worry about it. I'm uncomfortable with you on my lap as well, but I think we're going to be just fine. I pat him on the back twice. Finally, you make your way through the jungle and you're back out in the desert. that looks kind of like the desert you left before. He took some winding roads, went through a canyon and a, and a, an arroyo, if you will. Oof. And you come to a mesa. Uh, I lean over to Justin. And I say, I think we just hit a mesa. We're out of the jungle now. <laughs> and you look back and you see this vast jungle landscape. You see the dome. You see everything. You see everything that you were. And then you see the sign that says, Welcome to Best World, the best robot for robot theme park. Opening 2018. Uh, hey, Justin, did you notice that uh, that, that, that year is uh, like... We're, I know we're on some elevated plane in another dimension, uh, but but it seems like they have a parallel timeline. Yes. Yeah. And the sign below it says, uh, located in Idaho, your Idaho, financed by mysterious Chinese billionaires. <laughs> hey, Justin, did you notice that it says it's in our I, Idaho? I can read the sign, Brian. Okay, I can read right. the sign. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then you realize, like, wait, no, this, we never left our dimension because dimension hopping's dumb. Uh, man, it really so felt we like just, we left we our dimension. We were just dimension. transported outside of the facility that we were at when they told us that they were pushing us into another dimension. Huh, maybe. I wonder who God was and why I had godlike powers or possibly still have them. I look left and right for a camera to raise an eyebrow at. But then not finding wait, one. Hold on, wait a minute. But wasn't there like a gigantic Bryce that tried to kill us? Wasn't I, I, he like a I, giant? I, look, man, let's not let's not wrap ourselves. Hey, uh, I, that, I that start, part's real. I tapped on the sh- I tap on the shoulder of our driver and uh, and and suggest and and motion with my chainsaw hand to let him know I'm serious that I'd like him to to stop. He stops. I like, I like on you're you're asking said. him to like roll down his window with your chainsaw. Hand. <laughs> He stops on the mesa where he was already stopped, so you could read the dumb signs. Okay, I hop out and I say, um, I, I feign exasperation and say, "What's going on, man? I don't understand this. Who, who are you? Where are we, man?" He flips and then I look for a visor. camera again with my arms outstretched. He flips open the uh, the visor, and you see eyes. Do I recognize them? They're, they're not... familiar. They're they're intense eyes, but maybe a little, there's perhaps a bit of kindness in those eyes. I say, hey, man, I know you got kind, intense eyes, but I don't recognize you yet. Why don't you reveal yourself? And then I then I rev my chainsaw hand. I I, 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 I unrev Brian's chainsaw hand. We're not <laughs> uh, we're not killing the person before they're revealed. Like, yeah, this person I lead was over to Justin for and what like, maybe a sidearm. Wait, so yeah, no, what? I, I, I push Brian to the ground and I, 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 I like, no, you're not going to do this again. 
where you get frustrated and worked up into your bit and murder the person before we know what they're doing. I I remove the chainsaw from my right hand and hand it over to Justin with my head bowed down, and, and I say, this is right. All right. Uh, 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 reveal thyself, uh, kind stranger. Takes off the helmet, right? Turns his head to the side so you can do the dramatic flip of the head. And you see the, the, the perfectly fat, flat, coiffed hair, which parts to the side. <laughs> and the mustache. The small mustache. Small black mustache. Uh, 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 <gasps> Magnum P.I.? <laughs> Hitler! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you and I had very different <laughs> recognition moments. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is it Hitler? I turned to Justin and He asked, was Der Spiegel's sexiest man alive in 1935. <laughs> so I turned to Justin and I was like, are you sure it's not Magnum P.I.? This is definitely I'm Hitler. I'm it's not Magnum P.I. We were rescued by Hitler. And I called this one because the boots were too stylish. Okay, so I grabbed back my, my chainsaw and put it on my right hand just in case, but I put my right hand chainsaw behind my back. And I was like, sup, bro? Like you're hiding it? Uh, I mean, just I'm I'm not threatening him with it is okay. what I'm doing. I'm, yes. I'm trying to show that, that I'm being peaceable. Uh, uh, all right, I, I look at Brian and I say, no murder. I, I, you I, I, not murder until I tell you that we can murder. Are I we, hold are we up on, my uh, one uh, remaining two pinky. Key, we're on a two-key murder uh, system right now. I, we I, both I got hold up great. my remaining pinky in the air as if to say, pinky promise, bro. Uh, and then I, I turn to Hitler and I go, Hitler, what's up? <laughs> Hitler reaches over on the motorcycle. It rings a bell. Cling, cling. Then reaches over. Grabs the edge of his face uh, no, and no, slides it away. No! No! And you begin to realize Hitler's only four foot tall and looks like a chimpanzee. Oh, damn it! I knew it. Is it Bobo? Was that his name? Bobo. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was like, Bobo! So I reach over and I hug Bobo uh, uh, jubilantly. And he jumps up into your arms. <laughs> oh, Bobo! Uh, it, it, uh, I, I, I hold up my bitch sold us out. <laughs> I hold up my my left hand and a thumbs up, trying to get him to do the same, so both of us can look at Justin and give thumbs up. All right, as you do this, you hear the sound of hippies, didgeridoos. No, oh, it sounds no. like sounds like what's that, Justin? He sold us out again, Brian. No. It sounds, sounds like he sold us out four, again. And it, I don't think he ever sold you out. I do remember him trying to save you guys, and then you ignored him. And so I yeah, think you guys, you guys the, maybe the should the pay attention path. to him. <laughs> you all made the choice. I, 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 look, it's, I, I, look is, this, is this Mecca Bryce coming for us again? Is that what I'm hearing? And uh, Bobo goes, shakes his head no. Uh, oh, no, no. Is it worse? Better or worse? What, what, is it he worse? Seems, he's doing a little dance. A little dance. A little dance. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're, we're at a best world at the very least, so uh, uh, let's, let, let, let's just see where this plays out. All right, out. Justin, you take the wheel. You you drive. Uh, me and uh, I'll, I'll no, ride. Wait, we're waiting here for whatever is coming. He rang a bell, so something's coming. I don't know if I trust it. I feel like we should just get on the way. I feel like we should I, drive. I, we're going to trust Bobo for five seconds and see where it's Okay, at. what about Bobo's past performance indicates to you that we should trust him with anything? I mean, he's Brian lovable. Brian not argue as the oncoming whatever comes. What is coming? Okay, I look at Bobo and I give him a reassuring pat on the back but while while giving you a significant look that says, I don't trust Bobo and we should leave right now. You look and right over the edge of the mesa, something starts to move and lift. It's massive. It's ginormous. <sighs> what's what's it shaped like? Can I can I detect color or, or size? Uh, light gray. Light gray. And, and 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 if I was going to guess what size it is, I know it's difficult to di to discern that. Ten times the size of the Hindenburg. Who oh boy? Uh, I I reiterate to Justin that it might not be a bad idea for us to just GTFO. Yeah, and go where? The last time that we had to do this, we wound up going into a uh, a, a jungle where we barely survived, and you embarrassed yourself publicly. 
I mean, what else is new? All right, fine, fine. I, I cross my arms awkwardly to make room for my chainsaw hand. And then it rises up above this massive Zeppelin, and you see it starts to drift over you, and you see written on the side of it, it actually says Hindenburg X. <laughs> Uh, I, I turn to Justin Snidely and say, uh, how you feeling about this? You feel like uh, just hanging around here is a good idea? Yeah, Hindenburg, a lot of good like things it, happen it, there, right? It feels like a middle season Doctor Who plot. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns around and leaves you alone on the Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, say, I say, hey, Bobo, should we just go or what? <laughs> so uh, Bobo, what are, we, what are we waiting for? The Hindenburg, for the dramatic reveal, okay. the Hindenburg drifts over you, and then you see underneath it, you see like a uh, section open, cargo doors open, and then a platform begins to lower it down. Mm. It's a little slow, though, a little slow. A little, I, I like... swoop my right chainsawed arm uh, uh, gr graciously, as if I'm a butler inviting Justin into his own doom, since it's his idea to just ju trust whatever happened. I, you know, mockingly. Remember, remember in Rogue One where you're like, why do they park so far away and it <laughs> takes forever to walk to the house? It's kind of like that moment. You're like, like they really wanted to milk the drama for this. Yeah. So I swoop my arm out and then do various arm circles to indicate, like, your witness. Is there anybody <laughs> off the platform? It lands, but it's like six inches off the ground. It didn't quite make it, but it's there. Uh, I watched Justin get on the platform uh, while sitting with my butt leaning up on that sidecar. Uh, shoulder to shoulder, I'd like to think, with Bobo. Hold on, like, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 cool was there anybody on the platform when it opened? No, it's just it's by itself. Just an empty platform leading into the Hindenburg. X. X. I uh, raise an uh, eyebrow at Justin. <laughs> well, all right, wait, listen, what the hell are you looking for? Number one, uh, our choices right now are either go with the, the, the monkey that saved us from certain death because he trusts whatever's happening here, or we steal the monkey's motorcycle with no gas, no food, and no plan. All right. You know what? You're right. So I lean over and I grab the monkey's Hitler mask and I put it on to the best of my ability. <laughs> so I look as if I'm a chainsaw armed Hitler. And then I, I say, let's go. And I walk up to the platform next to you. <laughs> Hold on. You think, also, I check and see if safer disguised as Hitler. Than I, 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 whoever they are. I don't I, I want one up on them. And so, uh, also, I check and see if my Adolf online operating system is working. I say, Adolf, are you there? Nine. Oh, damn. Okay, all right. So, so we, I get on the platform disguised as, as Adolf. Justin? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, uh, Adolf Hitler's secretary, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, the platform starts to raise. You're like seven inches off the ground right now. You're nine inches off the ground right now. And then you hear this squeak, squeak, squeak sound coming from near the sign where there's some bushes. But there's actually, you didn't realize this before, there is like some sort of like entrance to an underground tunnel. And the pop opens up. And a man pokes his head out there with a mysterious wrapping around his face in like Mad Max style goggles. Uh, I say, I say. Uh, let's ignore that. <laughs> let's and he just shouts ride to you, Don't up. get onto the platforms. It's a trap. And he sounds an awful lot like Hitler. <laughs> I say, uh, I say, don't worry about it. I hear these these raiders like to pretend they're me. Me, I'm Hitler. <laughs> I, I I I say out loud. Hit list to the left of me. Hit list to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. And I do the dance from Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> um, you know what? Right. I don't know. Now, how how far how far up are we? We're like nine feet up. Nine. No, inches. You're like maybe twenty inches. You could make it right now. 
I say, I say, uh, I, I look to Bobo. I was like, Bobo, should we go with him? My, my buddy. Uh, Bobo is shaking his head. Bobo's like, no. Okay. All right. Then he, he puts his, Bobo puts his finger in front of his nose like a mustache and starts <laughs> goose stepping. <laughs> It's a little weird reaction, though. I, I'm sure I, 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 I'm getting into character because I, I, I want to make everyone upstairs when we get there think I'm Hitler. So I'm, I, I start practicing my German. I'm like, I'm like, uh, this is fine, Justin. Uh, so, uh, we shall rise up above. Great, great, great German. Uh, that's a, that's some amazing German. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All platform, right, no all right let, let's we're 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 gonna roll. We're rolling with the Heidelberg. We're not going to the down the the, the underground uh, Hitler Heidelberg. moles. <laughs> platform keeps raising, raising, I, I raising. Look him, I look at him dead in the eye and I say, "Screw you, Hitler mole." And I got I, I give I give him the eyes. I also give him the eyes, but awkwardly and checking over my shoulder to see if I'm doing it at the same time with Justin. Like nine, 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 nine. He's like having a fit down there. Hmm. Mm, and then well, he grabs fair, something. To be fair, uh, uh, Hitler is rarely in a good temperament when he's hanging out in a bunker, historically. <laughs> he grabs something and throws it up at you. Something metal. Uh, I try to catch it or deflect it with my chainsaw arm. What do you do, Brian? Do you catch it or do you deflect it? I try to hacky stack style, uh, hacky sack, uh, just deflect it and then catch it on the back of it. And then, like, you know, toss it back and forth and then expect a tip from does Justin. it hit your good hand i guess is yeah. the yeah question. like ding and then catch it in the good hand it's a luger Ooh, that's great uh i say probably shouldn't be trusted with this and i hand it to justin that's a good idea i, I take i take the luger and right. uh and by the uh, way long time listeners smartest move i've made in the history of journey incredibly Quest. forward thinking <laughs> So fast forward several minutes later, the platform is finally raising up above, and you're going into a lit cargo bay, and it's very, very dramatic. You see, well, you see leather boots, tall leather boots. Oh, great! And uh, and on top of them, I start I start shouting. I just start shouting uh, nonsensically. And and you see shapely, uh, you know, they see the pantaloon pants. You've seen this cloth yeah, before, this style before. I say, and and nice story, another thing. Really, the story, this story really has a fastball, and it likes throwing it as often as Nolan Ryan, doesn't it? <laughs> In the nicest butt you've ever seen. <laughs> I, I I continue to shout, just shouting nonsense. And then the platform comes to a raise, and the person turns around. And there's a woman, dark-haired brunette woman. I I, I turn dressed around. like Hitler. I, wait, the woman looks like Hitler. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I I she shot. Hello, I know you have many questions. I was like, you, uh, 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 my name is Adolfina Hitler. Adolfina. We have Hitler. much to talk about. <laughs> okay, look. Uh, how many? Uh, how many? Uh, I, I I say good. First of all. Let's get this guy in a cell because we're all Hitlers here, and he is not one of us. So let's uh, let's get him, uh, uh, seize him. Who are you pointing to? What's that? Who are you pointing to? Uh, Justin. Justin. The guy who's got off being a looks at you, Justin. Does yeah. does your friend always talk like this? Uh, yes, yes. He's a he's a real uh, silly goose. As we all know, that's a common phrase. So uh, 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 what do you say you bring us to the answer chamber? <laughs> Fine, we'll do that. And she takes you to, it's not, this is not the answer chamber, it's my salon. We will have many questions and answers here. Uh, good. Uh, uh, we, 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 we sit down and I say, uh, Brian, why don't you slip and do something a little bit more formal, a.k.a. take off your taped-on Hitler mask. <laughs> I, I deny understanding what Justin's talking about. I, I say, I don't know what you're talking about. I, uh, I am still, uh, two front wars are great, I say to no one in particular. Uh, she just stares at Justin. Shaking her head, clearly not convinced that you are Hitler. Yeah, uh, 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 listen, he's uh, uh, you know a very very troubled man. He's been through a lot of trauma lately, as you can see with his chainsaw hand. There, there's still a lot going on. We're gonna allow him to work through it in uh, the most pure, 
possible way that his <laughs> large brain naturally occurring in the wild can can possibly do to heal. All right. Well, she says, next time on Journey Quest. Ah! Gentlemen, uh, it's been weird. Wait, no picks? Oh, let's do picks. I'm a sweltering here. I got to turn on my AC. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> uh, let's do picks. Do picks. Do speed picks. Speed picks. Speed picks. Hey, speed picks. Uh, uh, how about this one? Uh, Logan Lucky, directed by Steven Soderbergh. It is out in theaters right now. It's really, really weird that the guy who directed three Ocean's Eleven movies would be like, let me direct another Ocean's Eleven movie that even makes reference that this is an Ocean's Eleven movie, uh, but uh, cast a bunch of non Southern actors as. West Virginia and North Carolina rednecks. Uh, it is really self-aware and really, really fun. And I was not expecting to like it as much as I uh, did, but uh, everybody acquits themselves uh, really, really well. And it's Soderbergh from stem to stern in terms of the, uh, the, the plot kind of fitting together really, really well and being extraordinarily well directed. Uh, I'm going to back Andrew's play when he suggested Hit Makers, the audiobook by Derek Thompson. Um, I'm almost done with it. And on balance, I, uh, I, I rather liked it, especially his suggestion that uh, what we call viral hits very often are the result of what he calls dark broadcasting. The idea like uh, uh, we act like when we don't know why something exploded, that it must be viral. Everyone told everyone else. But when you look at the numbers, it's very rarely pans out that that's the case. Usually there are a few people that have very, very loud megaphones that make those things happen. And that was a good, enlightening moment. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, so my crit of that book, and again, I enjoy it. It's very worth get it if you're interested in this that subject my problem with that entire section was i don't think he ever mentioned the word influencer and he's like well sometimes we don't know and i'm like oh it has to do with influencers you know people who have non-traditional means but we recognize that now and then he wouldn't call it that kind of thing and the idea of the dark broadcaster i'm like a broadcaster is a broadcaster yeah and that was no, you're that right was frustrating uh, yeah, there, uh, now that I think of it under that lens, uh, definitely uh, Dark Broadcaster would, would fall into the subcategory of, of the, the, the bucket labeled influencer. Yeah, and I mean, and I, I think that there are, because I think Dark, like, there are sometimes things like we don't know. And, and also, like, it was weird because this description of, like, viral, well, it's not really viral. It's like, well, your this description of, like, how a virus actually spreads, I'm like, well, that's not really a viral. Virus has a vector, you know, generally has, it's more dealing with specific vectors that are highly influential. So it was, the metaphor was driving me nuts to sort of make his case while ignoring that. It was a little bit to me. that. Yeah. Still enjoyed it. It's good. Uh, it was good, good, good thoughts popping up. It's a good book, but it was just some like he never said like vector talk. Well, the virus is like, no, that's not really actually how viruses spread. And the way they spread actually is like how things that we claim to go viral. We, there's just this misconception about that. But once you get it, you go, oh, you have a better insight. But still, I like the book. Right on. What about you? So my pick is, uh, man, I've been watching a bunch of stuff, videos, stuff like that. And all I'm going to say is uh, I'm still going to you know, I'm going to. I like Rick and Morty. I like the episodes. They've been good. I haven't felt like I've had like a standout one yet like we had in season one or two, but I'm still enjoying the show. I do think the Pickle Rick one was particularly good. I, I went into Pickle Rick like expecting to dislike it. And instead, I, the first episode was extraordinary and the Pickle Rick, I, th I thought it was really good. But I, I agree. Good. Like yeah. watching watching last night, I was just like, uh, sure, feels good to have can, more can of the same. Tell that Dan Harmon was in therapy when he wrote the season. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. So, gentlemen, it's been weird. Cool. Gotta, ba -da, ba -da, like, we got an excessive heat warning here, so I got to run the AC. Yeah, go All for right. it. Go for it. Go for it. Gotcha. Uh, I am actually going to drop off so I can get to this appointment. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks for hanging around as long as you could, Justin. Don't but don't break a leg. Love you guys. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. We're gonna do this here for a little between things. Mm, mm, mm. How are they already doing today? Yeah, I thought last last night's Rick and Morty was uh, was a little weird. I, it took it took me a minute to like actually understand, kind of get it, get it. Uh, 
uh, just in terms of the episode. What am I going to do here? Oh, do I have... Oh, yes, I can make a virtual of this. Instead of a virtual, we're going to change it to Skype 2. Oh, all right, here we go. All right, we're still we're we're still in the starting block starting block of of a uh, of a rock block today. Uh, we're gonna do after things here in just a little bit with Andrew and Brian, uh, and then we'll come back for cord killers and spoiler in time, where we'll talk about we'll be talking about uh, Game of Thrones and Rick and Morty and Firefly. Uh, if you haven't caught up yet with us on our Firefly rewatch, we are watching what is it? Uh, your Mr. Reynolds, your Miss Reynolds, whatever that, whatever that episode is. Um, so you got a little bit of time if you want to watch that and uh, join along in the spoiler in time discussion. Uh, Game of Thrones and Rick and Morty. Uh, what's the other thing? Maybe probably Preacher. I think they are catching. Maybe maybe catching up on Preacher. I don't know. Um, if I ask, what's the next series when Firefly ends? We don't, I, I don't think we've got one picked, but my guess is that it will be, um, uh, uh, whatever the second place, whatever the runner-up was on that poll. I don't, I don't remember what that was now. Is that, not the American, what was that? Deadwood? Maybe Deadwood? Hey, Andrew. Hello. Should I let my AC run? Oh, go for it. That's fine. God, it's got an ex excessive heat warning. Oh, it's murder. It's going to hit 100. Oh, jeez. The, the storm, the nice thing, the one thing about the storm has been that it's actually under 80. It's 78 right now. It's pretty nice. Easy breezy. Oh yeah, and the night attack. If you if you're listening right now, uh, you still have time to submit questions. To uh, we're doing sort of an AMA kind of thing for night attack tonight. So uh, go to reddit.com/r/diamondclub slash slash or diamondclub.reddit.com. You'll see a sticky post at the top with a, a thread where you can submit questions for tonight's episode. Uh, make them make them real, make them jokey, make them whatever. Address them to anyone. Uh, I know that there was one that was addressed to me. There are plenty that are addressed to Brian and Justin. Uh, I don't know if Bonnie will be around because uh, she will have been watching the kids all day or something. So, um, but yeah. So, got time for that. So, go submit questions. And then, uh, and then, yeah, one more time tomorrow, we're going to rebroadcast tonight's uh, Night Attack so that uh, if you can't watch it live, be able to watch it at the normal time. Yeah, Deadwood was the first. So it, it we'll probably do Deadwood after Firefly. That's my guess. But also, I think the guys might want a tonal shift <laughs> from, for spoiler in time. Uh, so they, they might do... They could do Dark Gently or... or um, but that's not much either. Or something something else. Something in, in a different... Uh, uh, a different sort of genre. Yo. Yo. That's not what that should look like. The dogs got up here, discovered some Burger King. Oh. I mean, it's not your fault the dogs got up. Or is it? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. You know, just a, a post thing about uh, the AI stuff. Like, like I think, like, super intelligent ones, it wouldn't surprise me if they're like, it's like, hey, yeah, no, we figured out how to fold space, do this sort of thing or whatever. Like, enjoy your monkey meat world kind of thing. The idea of, like, 
what 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 we think of technology and what would something a million times more advanced than us just makes me think like that's kind of cool and terrifying is the idea of like you know we talk about like pico technology and all that um it's just things i think about at night or when i drive speaking of which we uh we, we never talked about your harrowing drive back from the uh from the eclipse Ugh. Ugh. all the traffic all the traffic yeah we did pretty well in that regard um Hey, uh, we, we don't have a letter or anything, do we? Nope. What do you want to talk about in this after things? Story Voice is now on the App Store. Ah. Could use some strategizing. Hang on. I can get it right now? Yeah, he's mm -hmm. got a link at uh, twitter.com slash andrewmain. $99, Brian. It's $99 for one day only, only when I knew you were going to say you are going to buy it. <laughs> then it'll be two ninety nine for everybody else. Yeah, get ready. $299? Search. Let me fill you up. Oh, we can also talk about the people who tried to game the New York Times bestseller list. You heard about this? No, oh, I read about that. No, talk to me about that. Uh, in fact, uh, save it for the show. Let's talk about that. Well, here's the thing, just between us mice and our live stream listeners. <laughs> Hypothetically, I may have heard that somebody was going to try this before it happened. Ooh. Oh really? Mm -hmm. What do they uh, What do they do? Well, I uh, somebody who knew them said so. They're gonna said they're gonna try to do this, and I explained all the problems the way they were trying to do it. And when I watched it blow up, I'm kind of like, yeah, I told you so. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it worked for what a day or two? It worked for like an hour. An hour, yeah. <laughs> two. It just it just was like the fastest retraction they've ever had. Crazy. Wait, uh, should we talk about it on the show or no? Um, I mean, as it, Kit Cowan says, they didn't game it. They didn't just try. Well, is it called gaming it when you get caught like that? <laughs> you know? Well, and so, they, and well, they so were, what, they were, what do they do? Like, like, uh, well, they're, like, they're, or should they we talk about it New York on the Times show? Or? Bestseller list, which they had retracted, so they do not have an official New York Times bestseller. They're accused of, you know, cheating that. So, you know, um, and their response wasn't like, oh, you got us. It was like, no, we were trying to be real. But... They're like, oh no! There was multiple responses, and you know, like, oh no, we we don't know, we didn't do anything, uh, and then we may have bought some advanced, advanced you know, uh, I mean, we can, you know, we can parse what it means to game or whatever. Like, yes, they 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 got it on there, and then they got caught for it, and they had it retracted, and now they uh, are probably not happy with the result of that. <laughs> Well, okay. So again, back to my question: Is this interesting enough that we should save that we should have this discussion? Because I still don't know what it is they did. I, I know the effects of what it is. I know what they, they they were attempting to do. I don't know the method that they were trying. Uh, do we want to talk about that on the show? Yeah, we'll we talk wanna... about it. I, I just, I just, yes. Or, I, or, or, or do you want to tell me names. now? Because what's that? Or, or, or do you want to tell me before the show? I mean, like where? Here? Wait, what do you mean? Uh, I'm saying my problem is there are things that I know that I cannot say. Oh, oh we didn't catch that. Sorry I see you. That. Okay, uh, uh, got it. Maybe then let's not no. talk about it. And can you just tell me the method that they used so that I could scratch that itch? Yeah, I'll I'll talk. We'll talk. I'll talk around. The, I'll talk. Explain what happened on the show. And okay. Then all right. I will. I will protect whatever okay. was told to me in confidence prior. Got it. Okay. okay. All right. Right I, on. Yeah, I think that's all we were trying to get to. Okay. So we'll do that, and we'll talk about story, story voice. Uh, alrighty, guys. Uh, take it away, Andrew. In... Let me go turn off my AC. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. sweat for this for you. Mm -hmm. Good man. Good man. Ready? Yep. Ready. All right. Take it away in three, two. Welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Heck yes. After Thing, of course, is the uh, the show where we talk about what it's like to be an independent creative, and we do our best to give you advice, uh, bad advice from people who haven't 
hit their their targets yet. Oh boy, <laughs> a real hard sell, huh? I mean, look, look, man, honesty. That's that's key, right? <laughs> So, gentlemen, uh, and I'm including you, Bryce, uh, since Hello. we're missing somebody there who pff, I forget. That, no, that's I'm Bryce. always the third seat on After Things. Hello. Has I'm, always been. Yeah, forever. Bryce Nechcom Castillo here, um, who is the, the, the fourth member of Weird Things and After Things. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. On the last episode, which hardly feels like a week ago because it wasn't. I said I was pressing the button to submit my app to the App Store, my Story Voice app, storyvoiceapp.com, my voice dictation software tool for the iPhone, which allows you to dictate and it tries to intelligently figure out punctuation. So if you want to do dialogue or whatever when you're writing a book, it makes it easy to do that. Well, it got this rejected. morning, what's that? It got rejected. <laughs> they said, no, thank you, sir. That was my fear. Yeah. That was my fear. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. And I got some notification. I was, I was expecting that. But no, accepted. Now officially in the App Store. Look at that. All right. I just downloaded it. I have it on my phone. Uh, talk me through the process here. I, do I just do I hold down the You're quotation? Gonna have to, yeah, hold down the button. Press the button. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then and then what? <clears throat> Does it ask for permission to do anything? Uh, it did. It says. And you press Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. So hold down the button and say, hello, my name is Brian. Hello, my name is Brian, period. Oh, wait. You didn't need to say period, though. I didn't need to say period. Yeah. Just and like and it actually put two periods there yeah. when I did oh, that. That's great. Uh, can I? Uh, all right. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Brian, she said seductively. Uh, now, uh, is it in the, it's in the paragraph buffer at the bottom. So so uh, and and uh, so is there rules? What do I what do I do on all this? You can look at the instructions or watch the video. Oh, I, I so can't way, I can't while I'm talking will, to you, of course. I will talk you through it. Okay. okay. All right. Here we go. So, New document ready. Here, yeah. So what you do, the way it works, is you record one sentence at a time. So yep. you hold down the button and you say a sentence, and then you let go of it. Uh. Okay. All right. Here we go. You've been straight cold busted, she said. Now you let go of it, and it should appear in the lower section of the paragraph buffer, right? So it's yeah. building your story or one paragraph at a time by adding sentences in that buffer. Got it. Now, if you just tap the button once, it'll appear in the main document. Oh, right on. Okay. Oh, cool. So you can, like, confirm it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like that's correct. Okay. And then, uh, and so. What happened? Yeah, what what did a, it do? You have a redo function. So that's, if, that's kind of why. Uh, oh, cool. there we go. Uh, to redo. Uh, Okay, so let let's say let's say for example this wait, wait, time wait, what did it put up there? What did it put up there? What did it put? What did it put? Uh, it, unfortunately, I, I let go before I said said, so I okay. I don't think it understood that I was doing a dialogue thing. Let me try it again. Okay. You've been straight cold busted, she said. And then okay, so what it's got? It's got um, a double hash thing, uh, less than less than there. Now, what's waiting for is that's the paragraph buffer. Once you tap that button, that tells you, hey, this part's the dialogue, and this part is whoever was the speaker or the attributed speaker. So what should I do uh, uh, to, to, to enter this into my story? Do you want to add more to the paragraph? Um, that sounds like a whole paragraph, so just tap it once. Tap the button once. Oh, wow. Oh, it does. Oh, I, I, I was fooled. I was fooled because I didn't realize that it has its own nomenclature here. So so mm -hmm. now it transformed it and it put in quotation marks, you've been straight cold busted, comma, in quotes, she said. Uh, and I, I, all right. Julia sauntered across the room seductively. And then, okay, so in this case, let's say I wanted to add a, a uh, comma before seductively. How would I edit this? This time you would just, as you say, you would say comma or just tap that and put it into the main document and then you can click on it and then put your finger where you want to add the comma and just do that. Got it. All right. So, so I'm man, clicking so there. There we go. It. So I'm yeah, just it is. It is. It is a the first minute or two for people. It's like, wait, what's going on? But once you get the modality. Uh, OK. The, the all right. Here we go. Let, 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 all right. <clears throat> give it. Give it a real hard. All right, give it here a real we go. Brain and and burner. I just tap or I hold it while hold. I'm talking. Hold. The hold it while time? you're talking okay. to hold one sentence at a time. Uh, <clears throat> standing alone in the vast, wide open space, under a sky blue sky, Brian and Andrew 
fought the robot. Okay. So that's a pretty long one. There should have commas yep. in there. Some uh, hyphens probably. Yeah, it didn't do commas, but I can add those manually, right? So okay. Yeah, remember, commas are somewhat subjective, so it won't try to guess commas. Got it. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, all right, here we go. You sure do suck at role-playing, Brian, <laughs> said Justin. <laughs> um, all right, did it give... Did it no, give well, uh, hold on, I, 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 I mumbled. I'm still holding it. <laughs> all right, let me get rid of this. Okay, so what happens if it does it wrong and I don't want to add it? Hold down that, hold down the, the button. while it, If it's still in the paragraph buffer, just say uh, redo, re, that. redo that. Oh, got it. Redo that. Oh, you said it, and then it listened. Here we go. All right. Uh, <laughs> you sure suck at role-playing, Justin said. And then there's that. Got it? <clears throat> hey, man, leave Brian alone, shouted Andrew. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, it's... it's so go ahead. Yeah, so if you want to do the part of I created this was for doing writing dialogue. I thought it'd be like nice to do very normal back and forth dialogue, and you can do another moment. But if you want to do that, you don't have to keep saying he said, she said. It follows structure. You add sentences to the paragraph buffer, then you tap that button, and it puts the, that paragraph up in the top section. So let's say hold down the button right now. All right, and I'm, say, hol I'm holding you know, a my button. My name is Brian. My name is Brian. And then I okay. let go. Okay, now hold down the button again and say, I am a podcaster. I am a podcaster. Oh, you know what? It's It seems like I'm letting go a little bit too fast. Let me try that again. All right, here we go. Okay. There's My name is Brian. I am a podcaster. And then what I want you to say, this is what I do, he said. This is what I do, he said. Now tap the button. Got it. My name is Brian. I am a podcaster. This is what I do, comma, end quote, he said. Yeah, that's amazing. So the amazing. whole thing, it wrapped all the other sentences mm -hmm. inside of that dialogue. So, so that's why we use the paragraph buffer, so it knows, oh, this is all part of what you're saying here. That's great. Uh, uh, so let me let me throw a question at it. Like, <clears throat> how many robots do you have exactly, she asked. Now it should get rid of the question mark because it's... Oh, it nailed it. How many robots do you have exactly? Question mark in pair or in quote, she asked. That's awesome. Huh. Uh, so uh, I the answer hold the question in my hand, the power of the universe, said Elon Musk. Definitely understood Elon Musk. Just saying. Yeah, that's great. Oh, th this is awesome. So how do you how do you output this data? Uh, that, that I'm sorry, you have to pay a $20 fee per oh, document. No! no! Double dipping! Uh, so in the upper right corner, what do you see? Uh, there's three dots. I click on the dots, and you got share email as an attachment. Okay. You could turn auto punctuation on, the word counter on or off, the regular file. I'm going to do the word counter so, on. Yeah, so you do the share, and you just email it. It saves it as a .text document. You can copy-paste it, whatever. And mm. it keeps a uh, running log of character names. So, like, let's say I have a well, weird... Well, you add those. So yeah, what you okay, do, so what... here. I'm going to add uh, Zyklotron dash seven that's gonna be good just so you know it won't know siri it what what that will do is siri has to know that that's a name so if you put zyclotron seven into your phone book it'll know what this will do let's say somebody has a name like you know uh you know brian robert how right. do i know brian and robert are two different people or one person if you put brian robert into the characters it'll then know that that is one person and not a Brian and a Robert. Okay, so I'm doing Brian Robert on here. Uh, back. Oh, Brian Robert Maine. <laughs> My name is Brian Robert Maine. Oh. You jerk. He screamed <laughs> while <laughs> sad. <laughs> <laughs> This is good. This is, uh, it did, it well. did format it correctly, even though that <laughs> okay. was a nonsense. You added the name. <laughs> uh, it would be more like, uh, where are you playing, Brian Robert replied. Oh, mm. got it. All right. What are you playing at, Brian Robert asked. Okay. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, okay, so I, th I think I do need to add it to, uh, to Siri on there because it says... 
Uh, what are you playing at, Brian? Robert asked. Which okay, is, I'd uh, have to see. It, it may. I need to check to make sure that it's it's parsing that right. That that's on me, not on Siri. So I'll take a look and see what that did. Um, cool. Dude, um, this is fantastic. Awesome. So have, have you been using it to write to write your next book? Yeah, I've been using it for dialogue. It's been great for when I would do dialogue. You can do another feature if you hold down the button and you just say dialogue on. Dialogue on. See oh. the little quote marks there? What that means is that you can just, every time you hold down and add a sentence, you can keep adding sentences, then add, click again, you know, click it without anything in, you know, without saying anything. And it'll just do paragraphs of dialogue back and forth. And you can go back later on and said, he said, she replied, et cetera. That's cool. Cause yeah, you'll have breaks of like unattributed quotes because they'll be back and forth that's 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 clever yeah. I'll tell you what man just in general the uh the ability like voice recognition is just at an all-time uh, best best of best it's ever been i like just now i was holding this while you guys were Very speaking naturally asked uh wait who are you talking to you talking to your girl <laughs> you can see this yeah i know are you bug fixing what are you doing brian robert asked Ooh, here we go. Live Q and A. Live Q and A. A little bit of. <laughs> I'd like to imagine that he's live on stage at the Apple keynote, and uh, like, hey, and and yeah. Steve Jobs is like, "Hold on, let me fix Just that right now. Let me test sec. that." And then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, the goal is it's not it's not going to be like a hundred percent perfect, but for a lot of stuff, it's going to be it's way better than saying. I counted the number of syllables it takes to do things like quotation marks, etc., and all that, and it's crazy that, well, that and, how much and it also disrupts the flow of storytelling right like yeah you can enter uh, I, you know anyone who's told night night stories to your kids has gotten to that place where you're in the moment and you uh, are just telling a story and it seems like this frees it up to where you only need to let go uh what what each um uh each paragraph yeah each paragraph or or each sentence uh, for each pair, you let go for oh, each, you, you hold, you hold it down for each sentence. Yeah. Right. And then you confirm each paragraph. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Which, which I am assuming becomes very automatic as, as you yeah. get familiar with it. That's yeah. Awesome. You get very used to it. Cause I, I, this came from, was talking to Peter Wax, who was telling me about how Kevin J. Anderson would dictate books. Cause I was like, how do you dictate books? Cause a lot of times it's just empty pauses. He's like, you hold down the button while you say something and you let the button go. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, oh, and that modality got me thinking about like just playing around with voice dictation, studying techniques of other people. And then like, OK, if I just do one sentence at a time, because originally we talked about the iPhone app. The iPhone, oh, if I just press this for, for a period or quite, I'm like, oh, well, I can make it guess what that sentence is. It's not always right, but it's like I tested this. I took a bunch of books like John Grisham books and other books, and I built an app on my desktop where I would put these books in there and figure out like how things were broken up. And then I would test story voice against that saying, if I say this, do I get the same result? Right. And again, the biggest limitation actually, you know, it will, it, it's not always going to be perfect. Sometimes it's going to make wrong guesses, but it's accurate enough. The biggest problem has been actually the word recognition technology and that that's handled by Siri. And, mm -hmm. and if you've used Google voice, whatever, you know, that's, that's the most frustrating thing for me is when I use this is, the punctuation engine works pretty well, you right? Know, well enough for a first draft. But so is, is, words. That, is that something that's on the roadmap of using? Because I, I think sometimes when you dictate stuff to Siri, you'll get like the blue dots, right? When it's like, oh, I don't know what those words are. Is that something that you can use outside of, I guess, the standard Siri button? Because that's on like the main... I, yeah. I, I can't. It's not really easy. I, I wanted to create like a... I, I, I tried, looked up every resource I could to try to create a library of words and stuff to say like, hey, let me teach it how to know this or recognize that. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. There there could be a more advanced one that would go way beyond what I could do, which would have to intercept before or something, but it gets into being tricky. And so I'm just hoping at some point Apple lets us have our own dictionary for Siri that lets us add things in the meantime what you can do is add things to your you can you can train siri using notepad by correcting it it remembers how you corrected it or you can add things to your phone book like weird names like kevin j anderson was asking me like well how would i do bene gesserit why would kevin j anderson need a new bene gesserit okay it's the dune books um and i said well if you add that to your you know your address book etc so not. okay so what is what's so what's next for a story voice then what do you what what are you doing with it now? You got it on the well, store. Well, it, it's improving it. 
it's improving it. It, it is, it is, I've had 120 people who, you know, sign up for the beta and I got good feedback from a couple dozen people on it. And I've tried to, you know, adapt as what I can. There's certain things you just, you can't, you're not, I've had people make some feature requests that I'm like, if I was Daedalus, you know, or Ulysses and I had eight developers, I could do this. Mm -hmm. My goal is just to try to make the smartest, say this, try to figure out where the punctuation thing goes and try to improve it and just, just listen to feedback from people, figure out what are, what are things that I can tackle and improve it steadily. And then, uh, you know, people point out like if there'd be a, you know, a desktop, you know, a Mac desktop version may not be too out of the question because I can use a lot of the same code. An Android version I want to do, but it, the problem with an Android one will be this uses some stuff built into iOS, the natural language processing parser, which is brilliant, which there's not a corollary one in, in the, in the Android kit that works like this. So it'll take some serious dev mm. to do that. But I want to. I've been learning, you know, on the side, learning more about Android development so I can do that. So cool. what have you thought about in terms of uh, being able to show this off? Because uh, my marketing hat is is going on right now. And I'm thinking in terms of like, well, there needs to be some kind of video that demonstrates how it could be done. Maybe some kind of storyvoiceapp.com. Uh, oh, uh, do we have a video? Can we go to storyvoiceapp.com oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and take a look at the video? There's like a t there's been a tutorial video here on the on the site uh, that kind of walks you through the process of of making a story voice document and, and going through the, uh, you know, learning the modality stuff that, that we were doing at the start of the, the start of the episode. So, so sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. Uh, I was going to ask, like, it seems to me like what I would love to see is a, it could be a 10 minute recording of something where, uh, where you live get to see everything created through story voice uh, maybe like what uh, you, you, you publish a free short story and then say, here's how I made this in. Actually, if, if you're going to do it as a stunt, it seems like you would say, Hey, everyone on Twitter, uh, give me the name of a planet. Give me this, give me that. They give me the other thing. And in 10 minutes, I'm going to post a short story, mm -hmm. uh, involving all of those. And so they do that. And then you post the story, and you're like, "Here's a video of me doing that in 10 minutes." I, I can please acknowledge Andrew. He's gonna yeah. He's Andrew gonna Andrew's about to his knock nose. his nose off by by <laughs> tapping it so hard. We'll talk offline. I've got a version of that that's even crazier. Oh, great, you great. Talk, you, but yes, you you talked about yes and yes, Brian. You're 100 percent 100 percent instincts. I think are great on that. You, you talked about training it, or, or rather testing it against you know existing literature i i think that would also be interesting to say like hey this is me doing it live against this written piece you can watch me do it in real time or or however and then compare the two yeah uh, that, so that might what be a I similar sort of idea what, what i want to do right now now is the phase because like i've had friendly people use it and who say very friendly things to me about it i've had great you know touching stories one of the users and this sounds like i swear to god this sounds like a made-up thing like but I had a woman who lives in an assisted, assisted living facility has been using it because she has arthritis, and she's been using it to document the stories of other people who live there. Oh, wow. oh that's, that's great. great. You know, and you get this email, and you're like, holy cow, I got to make sure this thing is good. You know, yeah. and I have a friend who has, who's, she's going through vision, losing reduced vision, whatever she's using. I'm trying to make it more accessible. You know, and so right now what I want to do is I've had friends use it who say nice things. Now it's going out into the world of anybody else like, what's this? What did I just pay three bucks for? And now it's learning how to make it sure that I, I can I, I express what it does, don't overpromise and deliver what it's supposed to do and help people use it. So I want to spend the next couple of weeks doing that before I go crazy into like, everybody check it out because got it. I so 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 you know, you, you, you're in in a soft release period right now. Yeah, it's 1.0, and it's this. It's good enough, I think, to be released. I've had friends. I have pro writers. Peter Wax has been using it on a regular basis. I have friends that are heavy writers that are using it as a production tool. But I got to make sure that the average person who comes into it, and some people, I and I've gone out of my way. Like if you find it in the app store, the first thing is a video. I have a 30 second video, the demo that I narrate it, and then on screen the text tells you what it does as it as it I have text explaining what it does and the text I'm using to explain the app is explaining the app I put story voice app out there because it's like watch that video I'm telling like watch this two and a half minute video because once you do that you go 
oh, you know, and I and it's, it's that it's that, you know, I've tried to make this one button as easy as possible. All right, so so again, hold it down while I'm talking. Let go when I'm not talking. Tap once to make it a paragraph. I just yeah. all I want to do is play with it. I used to think that I'd never be able to write a book. That was before Story Voice. Yeah, look at that, man. That's amazing. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, once you get into the groove of it, it's fun. And then it gets, when it, you know, when the, the voice recognition system messes up a word, it gets a little bit annoying because you're like, ah, oh, you know, everything else works. But it's, for me, it's my favorite tool now for just dictating things in general, not having to say period, not having to do that. And the sentence paragraph modality helps the way I think. And so uh, is there a uh, copy to clipboard function on here? Um, you should be able to just, um, under share maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, copy. There you go. Yeah. So you can just copy it that way. Glad uh, you could answer that question. <laughs> I should have known this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing it right now. So I, so you could compose it, paste it. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Very I'm cool. Like, back this up folks. Back it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I, I so what's your game plan? Like, uh, like, like you're in soft release right now. You want to get the feedback and figure out what works and what doesn't work for folks. Uh, when, when you pull the trigger, is there a timing situation? I think it's just a ramp up. I think that it's like, you know, like I have, you know, on Twitter, I said, Hey, check this out. I'll probably send a thing out on my email list tomorrow. And then it's a build up. And then probably once I feel that I'm, I'm comfortable with where it's at, then, uh, I have something happening in a couple of weeks book related, which I will be able to talk about in approximately four days or five days, which will be kind of big. And I'll be able to use that as a platform to talk about this a little bit. Um, and I think it's just building that up because NaNoWriMo is in November. I want to get this thing. I just want to get it as good of an oh, app as it can be. Oh, that's great to tie it into an organic influx of all of a sudden people are trying their first time novels and, and, and basically – you're saying, look, for two dollars ninety nine cents, if you are a very uh, verbal uh, writer, yeah, no, no, yeah, no matter who you are, all of you can write your book, yeah. and it'll be super easy. That's that's yeah. brilliant. That's great. So you know, it's just it's that you know you, you make something and you want to go, hey, everybody, look what I did. But as we've learned, is you don't. There's friends and family react one way, and then the rest of the world reacts another, and it's not their fault. You've got to communicate what it does. You've got to teach them how to do it. You've got to manage expectations and deliver that. And that's what I need right now is I'm in that phase. And that said, everybody who likes this, if you leave it a nice review, it would mean a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Uh, so. And I would say that the, uh, the does the star ranking matter more than the, the, the actual written review? Because um, I know that our friends over at uh, uh, We Have Concerns are like, don't even bother to write words. Just give us five stars. I don't know. I don't, every system is different. And, it, and it's funny, too, because, like, we'll talk about this. There's a controversy about some people who may or may not have tried to buy their way onto the New York Times bestseller list. And, uh, and one of the things somebody put up there was they used a site that looks at Amazon reviews and ranks the worthiness of the reviews, like, to see, like, how and, – and they said, like, ah, oh, look at this. It's proof that, like, the reviews, you know, the reviews look like they're bogus. And I started plugging in my books because I'm like, well – I, I know I've never faked a thing, and I won't even ask people to give me five star reviews because I never want to be accused of asking of, people. Of, of, begging. Yeah, correct. Of, you know, of I will say, I will. If you're like, I love your app, you're like, great, go review it on the app store. If you're like, I love your app, I'm like, how can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I put in like, and for this, you know, I, I I have I signed up. I have a support system, by the way, using one of the support sites, so I can be able to do that. But anyhow, um, uh. You know, I think, you know, my, my thing is if you like it, tell people, you know, one, tell people you love it and tell people why you like it. And that's with my books. I don't say don't write a review. Tell people why you like it. Tell people what you liked about it, because what really is good about that and the reason I do it, it does two things. One is it encourages maybe more favorable. But the other thing is that it helps people look at that and go, oh, this is for me. If it's like, oh, best book ever, well, it's not going to be best book ever. But if it's like, man, I really love Station Breaker tech. I love the tech. I love this, you know, the way that he just depicted, you know, this realistic sort of stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's what I want in a book. I'll be happy. Yeah. And if it's so, or if I don't like tech stuff, I'd be like, oh, nerd alert. 
So uh, you mentioned, um, we were talking in the pre-show about this. Uh, can you tell me the story about the about this this story of the people who tried to get on the New York Times bestseller list and what happened? Well, they did for a fleeting moment. So there was the publishing world was... Before you say anything, let me just tell you what little I know. What I have heard is that it is fairly common for... Um, high profile people to spend a bit of money to uh, have uh, ghost purchasers pick up their book at a number of stores. Like, like uh, uh, any Women? bestseller list gets their data somewhere. And yeah. there is a dollar value to, uh, there's a profit motive for somebody to figure out what are the stores that are being counted and, and, and when and how and to get a bunch of people like there's this whole ghost industry of people who uh, you could buy purchases of your book to make sure it gets on the New York Times bestseller. Let me tell you a story using story voice. It's a total story. Oh, it's a total great. story. Tell, okay? tell a completely fictitious story. A week ago, Andre, <laughs> uh, Andre. Mine, Agassi, <laughs> Andre was secondary. talking to somebody who said, hey, have you heard about this book called blank? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you all pretend to be this person. I'm like, just, just for ease no. of storytelling. Yeah, no. Sure. Should I have? And they said, oh, yeah, this book called blank. These people are trying to make a movie on this book called blank. And they're actually trying to raise money. And they're telling people that they are going to be a number one New York Times bestseller. And this person said, I don't even know how you could do that. And I said, well, you can do that, but you got to do it smart. And I said, let me go look at this book called Blank's Amazon page. Book had not been released yet into the New York Times bestseller list. And not this is before. I look at their Amazon page for this book called Blank. And I see, man, there are only seven reviews. This book's been out for 10 days. And the reviews all came out within a 24-hour period and looked like the kind of things you'd get at a dinner table when you asked your friends to post nice things. Seven reviews. And I said, and there, and I'm like, and these people are going to perhaps buy placement for a book called Blank on the New York Times bestseller? I said, yes, that is what they're telling people. They've actually raised some money to do this. I'm like, man, they haven't even astroturfed their Amazon right. This does not sound like it will go over well. But yes, it is possible to do that because there's a number of stores that New York Times looks to for reporting numbers. It's done all the effing time. Right. So, but I'm like, yeah, no, this is problematic. And also like, and then it's like, well, the people who are the writer of this book wants to star in a movie based on a, bank, a book called Blank. And they've got a friend who was in his franchise, but you don't know who this friend is because nobody remember this person from this franchise attached to it, book called Blank. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I, and I said, like, listen, you can game these things. And I could name other books called Blank that gamed. And I could tell you how they were gamed. Uh, but more intelligently, they were gamed. Uh, but they were good books, you know. And for for me, I would never do something like that because the risk is too great. And I like I think I write good books. You know, I like I, I write good books and I would never want so, it to get out uh, of it. Basically, uh, if, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's like um, uh, it's not unusual to pull off a stunt move. But the downside is that if you get busted pulling a stunt, then that goes on your permanent record. You get difficult yep. written on your chart. It goes on your permanent record and you've got to do the stunt right. You got it. You got to know what you're doing. And so when I heard about a book called Blank and I look at their Amazon page and the Goodreads, I said, there, I said, there's no. There's no track record here. If if I was going to pull the stunt they're going to do, the first thing I would have done was not even not even trying to do anything sort of illicit is if I had the money they had, I would have been going to cons and I would have been throwing throwing up uh, book blogger parties with an open bar. And yeah. I would have been meeting people, I would have been making friends and stuff, getting books in hands and things like that, and I would be spending the next five or five months or so building up a footprint for this thing. And befriending everybody I want to befriend so that when it happens, people cheer the success instead of get critical. So anyhow, that's a totally unrelated, fictitious story. Never happened. Sure. But 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 uh, uh, in regards to this actual story, we're well, talking let me go about... what happened. I'll explain what happened. Sure. Yeah. OK, OK. Got it. Fast forward uh, Thursday. Again, that whole weird feverish dream I had where somebody said somebody's going to try to do this, whatever. And I'm like, no, this is it's a bad idea. The way they're doing it sounds, sounds bad to me. Thursday, I open up my news feed and I see 
Hey, uh, New York Times book num- number one book delisted for uh, suspicious activities or inconsistencies. Oh, dear. And, and so a book called A Handbook for Mortals, mm. uh, which I'd never heard of prior to Thursday, <clears throat> uh, basically had launched at the number one spot on the New York Times bestseller list. Okay. And other people, YA authors who follow this list and people in the publishing industry looked at this and they're like, what the F is this book? We've never even heard of this book. How is this number one? It's not in bookstores. Nobody's seen this book before. And it, it was had an, at the a time. brand new publisher, the, this, yeah. this Geek, Geek Nation, Nation thing that was only around for a, a month or so, uh, uh, which is just incredibly suspicious. And uh, it, there's someone's got like uh, some Alexa ranking for their website. The- yeah, it's Phil Stamper. I actually talked to him on, on Twitter. So he was tr- pointing out that Geek Nation had almost no traffic. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden, their first time publisher, this book launches at the New York number one spot, which is suspicious. Now, I'm not saying that a bunch of people didn't go rush in and pre order that book. I don't know. I, I will not say that that did not happen. But Phil said he put this out there and was like, hey, what's the deal with this? I've never heard of this book. Nobody's heard of this book. How's this number one? And he pulls up the to get on the New York Times bestseller list, you need to sell 6,000 books in a week. That's it. 6,000 books in a week through bookstores, but you got to hit the right store. 6,000 books. Right. This one had orders for 19,000 copies. That's a lot. Phil gets calls or gets texts from booksellers who are saying, hey, again, this is all hearsay, saying, hey, uh, yeah, our bookstore got a call. People, somebody wanted to order like 100 copies or a couple hundred copies. They didn't care when to pick them up. Oh, and so they were... that's sloppy work. That's sloppy craftsmanship right there. So yeah, one of yeah. The... So yeah. wasn't it wasn't that they were sending people in to buy books? They were just calling up bookstores to pre-order books. Somebody was. We don't know who this was. Could be. Could be one person read this book, loved it, and decided to get a bunch of copies of the biggest fan sure. in the world. It has nothing to do with the people who wrote it. Sure. So anyhow, long story short, this book. Moved had 19,000 copies, but people raised a stink. New York Times went and looked at it and said, Yeah, this is suspicious. Delisted it, and now there is a bit of a brouhaha over this and the book. Well, so, so, uh, where's the brouhaha? Because, uh, either they, um, uh, either somebody was trying to game the system and they didn't game it very smartly and they got busted, or uh, they are uh, genuine uh, and if strange, bulk orders for the book if it is the latter it seems like the author would be all like hey ma'am i can't believe you would accuse us of that let's fight uh if it's the former seems like somebody would sheepishly back away slowly right so the response has been the the author of the book and the people involved have said hey we don't know you know we we did like pre-order some copies because of some con appearances where we were going to be at uh, you know, because they were doing, they're going around Wizard World or doing those cons and stuff. Said the quote: "We did have some calls made to some bookstores where some Wizard Worlds would be happening soon, and would place the order saying, we don't care if you have books right now. We just want to make sure they're there before the event.' That's the quote. Which it's a little. Sus- uh, it sounds awfully close to a admission. Also, of- buying your own book from a retailer sounds like the not the most efficient way to do that." Well, uh, necessarily, I, I I don't know. A case could be made where where you could say like, um, if hey, all things, shipping. all things, yeah, exactly. Or but, or, or also, it's like you know, we could sell them ourselves, but it wouldn't be counted, and we suspect that if they buy at the store, it'll be yeah. counted. Okay. Now, I'm so this kind of blew up, and I don't know where things will go from there. And the publishing industry is not, for instance, a forgiving industry. And there are a lot of people who are try very hard for success and can be very upset when somebody tries to game the system, whatever. You know, I've dealt with, you know, my own sort of issues with some people who, you know, think that, hey, you have this platform. I don't know if that's fair. And it's like, uh, I mean, is it any different if you first if this of all wasn't your show or yeah, I, and, and, and for, for the record, they're right. It is unfair when somebody has a huge platform. I was thinking about this uh, uh, years ago. I was thinking about how you know Dave Ramsey every time he puts out a new book, you know he's he's got you know he's on a, a billion radio stations. He reaches 
a trillion people, and and it doesn't matter what's in the book. It is no indication of quality when he comes out with a new book. Uh, I, and which, by the way, his books are generally quite good. Uh, but they could be bad, and it wouldn't matter because he's got a million people listening to him mm-hmm. every single day, and he's able to say, "New book, buy it," and then people will buy it. Yes, it's unbalanced and it's unfair. It's also reality. It's also the nature of the business that if you have a platform, you will sell more books than if you don't have a platform. Yeah. And I guess, and, and what we mean by fair, I mean, it's like, did, did I act unfairly? No, you know, and, and, and does somebody who, you know, do I act with, do I act with deception or whatever? Not that I would tell you about. Uh, and I think that that being said is, you know, we, we love to pull our cons and our little games and our heists and our diamond club. And we love to do stuff like that. When we do it though, we do it openly with something like Correct. diamond club. Yeah. The and, and, and I think that's the difference and it's is, not is that we don't, we don't, we don't fake a novel like the diamond club, get it to the top 10 on iTunes and then turn around and announce we're legitimate authors, people. I think well, you can tell uh, we're great, but it's also, those are all real sales. That's based off of real sales data. Right. We we did what literally anyone. It, it's kind of oh, like that's a, true. It's kind of like true. an award show that we know about. It's we have our fans, and we our, told our fans that correct. this thing existed. We used our platform. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're if you're unfamiliar, a few years ago uh, we faked. Uh, I'm going to use air quotes we around faked. We crowdsourced an erotic yeah, fiction novel book. to to piggyback on the uh, romance the genre, sales of of E.L. James Fifty Shades of Grey, and we made it. We put it out on Front Street. We used it as a as a story conceit hey wouldn't it be fun for us to fake our way to number one uh everyone buy it and 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 let's see if the ball gets going um and and it worked very very well and and uh but it was a bit of performance art and at the end of the day we weren't hoping for everyone to take us serious as as credible authors of romance Mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's you you know you you have to figure out what game you're trying to play, and for for what that that the goal of that was was let's do a fun sort of lark kind of thing. You know, myself as an author, you know, my goal is I want to build up a fan base. I want to find people who like the stuff I like, and I want to play the longer sort of game of that. And I'm not above, hey guys, let me come on Night Attack to talk about my book. But I'll then like, hey, let's put at the end of weird things, let's put part of the book, and I give my books out like crazy on my email list. When I can give my books away, I give them out. I'm like, no, just read them. If you like them, review them and tell people you like them. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I if I thought I was doing crap or I didn't have an audience for it, you yeah, know, I, I wouldn't as, do that. As best, uh, okay. So there, there there is sort of a dark. Um, a dark network of of people who do things like uh, what they call reputation management or uh, or or uh, and there are PR be, companies. Uh, well, uh, PR companies like like PR companies times twelve. You think of a PR company, it's like oh, I know the guy who books at the Tonight Show. I can get you on the Tonight Show. Let me make a call. Hey, you owe me a favor. Get on the you put this guy on the Tonight Show. Um, but but a step farther on that is like there are people who uh, there is an author who. Um, uh, I know who wrote some very good self-help books, but then dipped into this whole um, the secret thing, just wish it and it'll come true, attract money by thinking really hard about it. And it, it really bummed me out. And, and I've distanced myself from that individual. And it used to be that I would type this person's name into Google and it would autocomplete scam. Mm. And when I looked at the books, the books would be, you know, there'd be those AstroTurf five-star reviews, but then a whole bunch of one-star reviews. To my astonishment, uh, five years after noticing this, I went back and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's still the case. All of those are gone. Nothing but five-star reviews. The reviews are gone. All, uh, yeah, yeah. Individually, huh. each of the, and and it might be as 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 direct as somebody, um, as, as somebody just saying, hey, uh, uh, here's a letter we sure would like for you to have, uh, I don't know, I, I'm making stuff up. I can imagine a scenario where everybody who posted a legitimate one-star review was induced or, or was placed in a situation where mm-hmm. they thought it was in their best interest to retract their one-star reviews. And ultimately, there's a dollar figure that it costs to make all of that happen. Hmm. And these uh, these re- and, and in fact, if you listen to this will be my pick, by the way, uh, uh, 
John Ronson's book, um, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, talks about this. Uh, if, 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 if there are people who are in such a damaging situation that they spend money and people through, I don't even want to say nefarious, I'm sure they're all legal and totally appropriate, but they can unmake bad reputations. They can make, sure. uh, they can unmake videos from the internet and that stuff, essentially. Um, I have always assumed there was some market for that, uh, like for vanity purposes. If you're, for example, let's say a, a supermodel who, you know, how I made it through life by being beautiful, by a supermodel, you know, you probably want it to come out at least in the top 10. And they'll ask, yeah, these companies will say, well, how high do you want to go? Because at this, for, for you know, I'm making up all these numbers, $10 million or $10,000, we can guarantee it gets in the top 10 at 100,000. We can guarantee it's top three, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, so it, it just sounds like these guys played a game that has existed for a long time, but just did it sloppily and tried to do it themselves rather than paying big money to an expert. Speaking of hypotheticals, I would say yes. I think that it, it sounded, because like in that fever dream I had, I'm that like didn't about the, a week before, I'm like, they're doing it wrong. The, you know, week before, I'm like, the problem here is if you were to then get a number one Times bestsellerist, anybody, everybody is then going to go look at Amazon and see that what there's seven reviews. There's only one quote from one author about this. There's no Goodreads. There's nothing. There's none of that there. And if you look at the footprints, if you're trying to do this, you need to cover your bases. And to if they, if they had to, you know, take delivery of all those books, you know, that's four hundred thousand dollars. And so money was spent. A lot of money was spent to do this thing or was, you know, uh, you know, to this. The goal was the, the ostensibly would appear the goal was, hey, have a number one selling best, never have a number one bestseller and then flip it into a movie deal and make a big movie or finance a movie. And mm -hmm. may or may not have heard details about that. But the point is. All right. You know, I mean, and, and it's 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 that. Oh, all you have to do is blank. All you have to do is blank. It's like, oh, there's, 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 there's more to it. There's more so to it. In this hypothetical fever dream that definitely was not based in reality. We should take some Tylenol. Uh, this some, person, yeah, this person well. just assumed it was as easy as one, two, three. Like all you got to do is move books. I, they, move I books. was, I talked to an intermediary, somebody else who would, who would in the dream who talked to these people and said that, oh, you know, it, it's their, you know, that that's just do this. And and this person was skeptical that you could do it. I'm like, no, you could, you can game New York Times bestseller list, but you need to do blank, 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 blank. To do that and it's expensive you know yeah my strategy is i just i love to write books so i just write books and <laughs> never had a new york times bestseller i have amazon bestsellers but i never had a new york times bestseller sure know? sure but, but uh but having said that man like that's a that's a tangible number of number of books uh six thousand hmm. that's uh makes, oh yeah it if, makes me want if, to write a book if if my if my if Amazon if New York Times counted ebooks the way if they did it in a fair way I would have been New York Times bestseller easily with Angel Killer easily yeah, yeah. Um, but they don't interesting um, uh, all right well hey man my my pick was what again what so I, you've been uh, publicly shamed yeah by John Ronson I'm gonna publicly shame you super you your good pick. super good really yeah. enjoyed it 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 takes a there's a number of tales in there that that I remember seeing happen on Twitter uh, and having had a a fleeting uh, touching fleetingly as as they passed by like like oh this is happening around me right now and then. Mm -hmm. Uh, he actually meets those people and tells their stories hmm. and, uh, and and talks about the complicated power that we have. The, the asymmetry of Twitter is is a uh, magical and strange and sometimes horrific situation. Hmm. Bryce? Uh, I'm going to pick. I just played a game recently that I think actually would probably fit pretty well here in After Things. Uh, it's called A Normal Lost Phone. Have either of you guys heard of A Normal Lost Phone? No. Oh. So it is a... Uh, it, it's oh wait so so it looks like like it's an app that basically opens up as if you found a, a phone on the street and... yeah it's like a phone an i or not an iOS but it's like a phone OS that you play this game through uh, and you you are looking through this person's text messages and their emails and you are trying to figure out what happened to this person I think when you start the game it shows you the title screen and says you have found a phone find out what happened That's to it. That's brilliant. And there's there's a little bit of light um there's a little bit of light puzzle solving 
And I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This I would time. imagine like cracking their password. You have to yes. go through and you know try their birthday or something. Yes. Yeah. And and so I'm gonna say this in a non spoilery way, but it it frustrated me when I first found out about it. Uh, this the story is told uh, in. Uh, you can tell it's from uh, like England or some sort of UK. Oh, they spell color with a U. The no, savages. No. Well, and, and so they do. Uh, they format uh, numbers and they format certain stuff in a certain way. So, so you're just saying, be aware saying, that in other parts of the world, it might not go month, day, year. No, it what might I'm be... saying is, understand that that might not be the right way to do it. That they, it's inconsistent. Oh, stuff might be a little inconsistent. They celebrate nine eleven on November 9th. <laughs> <laughs> um, in any case, I think it's a it's a really charming game. It's about an hour and a half, two hours or so. Lots of lots of really good visuals. That there's a soundtrack while you're while you're thumbing through the phone. Uh, the, this person's music library is playing, and so you're kind of listening to their. That's it's, great. It's so you get into their headspace for all that. Yeah, very and cool. It, and it's only like what two? It's Three dollars on Steam. It's on iOS and it's on Android right now. And they're working on a sequel called, I think it's called Another Lost Phone or a Second Lost Phone, something <laughs> like that. And it's it's not a direct sequel. It'll be a spiritual sequel. Um, Keep finding these lost phones. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> you? You finally. Yeah, they, they I'm have the, the phone like, finder. Like, yeah, the last game is like you steal phones. <laughs> it's all about going around stealing people's phones. It's an endless runner game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smuggled phone up your what? Because you're in prison for being a phone stealer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's a that's a normal lost phone. Check it out, Andrew. I have two picks. One, by the way, I love that. Like that whole kind of text based SMS sort of fiction thing is really become popular and and to my surprise I usually uh, so don't like it. I've played a few of those games that are specifically in like text message form and I usually don't love them. Mm -hmm. I usually don't love the medium, but mm -hmm. they're I, I think th this is a little different than that. So That's cool. Yeah. Sorry, I like, I'll talk to you offline about my latest uh, my latest project here. Ooh, uh, okay. because now that story voice is out and I'm in maintenance mode, I'm I'm working on another one. Um, I got two picks. Uh, one is, just, by the way, I watched this again, which was on Amazon Prime, which is super bad. And what a fun movie. Super bad's 10 years old now. 10 God, years can't old. Believe it. You know, make you feel ancient. Uh, I've been, as I've been learning stuff, looking for places to learn, you know, stuff, there are some, I found some pretty good tutorials for learning stuff. And one of my, yeah, it's 10 years old this month, by the way, super bad. Uh, one of my favorite places, there's a guy who does Swift tutorials on YouTube. He's called The Swift Guy. And, um, at first, his tutorials were kind of a little bit too fast for me, and I had to stop and slow them down a bit because I'm like, wait, 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 what's this? But now that I get I'm more into doing you know, programming and stuff and following along and knowing what a lot of these things mean, I like the speed at which it moves because mm -hmm. instead of spending 40 minutes, I'm getting something in 12 minutes. Young kid, uh, wow, I'm not yeah. sure where he's from, Scandinavian country of some sort, I believe. Uh, I think his name's Sebastian. He's got a, Ud a Udemy course, but the Swift guy... Uh, and I think it's swiftguy.com or the swiftguy.com. I really enjoy his videos. There's a couple other people who do some good ones, though. But I've been learning how to use Firebase, which is this Google system for doing authentication for apps. And, you know, he had two 10-minute videos that just totally explained everything to me. I spent more time installing a piece of software to do it than I did actually having to, you know, go through it. So That's I love it. He's making great videos, and I really enjoy that. So. It, it's always really good when you can, like, find uh, someone who is – is who is teaching stuff like in a tutorial manner and you like really their voice and their style resonates with you. I think of uh, uh, Andrew Kramer from uh, Video Copilot. They uh, his historically do tons of After Effects and all sorts of graphic stuff. Uh, and that's the sort of thing was like, yeah, I dig that guy and I like the way that, that they teach this. So that, that's pretty cool that you found that with uh, the Swift guy. Yeah, yeah, it's been very helpful because he'll do this, hey, how did you blank and blank? And it's been great, so... It's my pick, gentlemen. It's been great. It's uh, and been, after, been after. It's been after. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good shows, everybody. Good shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're gonna go offline here for a little while. We'll come back in about two hours or so for cord. Two hours? No, an hour for cord killers. Yeah. Um, I think it's just Brian and Tom today. I think it's just gonna be. A nice little Brian and Tom sort of thing, right? Perfect. Yeah. 
works for me. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys. Ba -ba 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 -bye. Bye. Oh, don't forget. Uh, are, are we not even live streaming? Are we? Uh, are we live streaming Night Attack tonight? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you not want to? It, it, no, no, no. It's just going to be an unusually personal episode of Night Attack. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. You guys. Bye, guys. This is not the song that I thought it was. Still works. Yeah. Is it just us? Is it just us? No, it's not. We're just... Nope.